Conference, regular meeting Tuesday, June 1, 2021, 6.30 p.m. via Google Meet. Um, adjustments to the agenda. Um, we wanted to add, um, I would like to add a, a discussion of uh, Suzuki. Uh, would be discussion item, so 8.7. Um, if that's acceptable to the rest of the board, please signify by a thumbs up if uh, this is Suzuki being in the elementary school introduction to all of you. Uh, Justine, are you okay with that? Yep, absolutely. Bill, are you okay yes. with Yep. Thank you. Amy, Amy's a thumbs up. Good. Um, do we have Patrick on? I don't know if that's his phone number. I know he's joined by phone. So I think we have he might have just yet. called in. That looks like a familiar number. But. Yeah. Patrick, is that you on phone? Nope, I guess not. Okay. Um, and was there another one, Jamie, that I sent to you? Where there you was. About? It was the board vacant member. board position. I didn't receive yeah, any vacant, uh, vacant board board Exactly. From the uh, article in the Herald. Yes. Yeah. All right. So those two items, are we good with that, Amy? You good with talking about that? Justine, good with that? And Bill, are you good with that? I can't see you. Yeah. So thank you. All and, right. Uh, real quick, we do not have a celebration of learning tonight. We ah. it was a beautiful night. I think yeah. Springs I in the air or summer, and Lindy and Bonnie struck out, they said. Ah. Well, they're out doing things they should be doing. That's great. If they're outside. Um all right. Uh, any further adjustments to the agenda, aside from my two, that anybody has? No, no. OK. Uh, assigned timekeeper. Amy, are you willing to take this on again? Please, thank you. Um, I think approved consent agendas will be uh, five minutes. No celebration of learning. So board comment, let's give that five. Um, reports to the board. 15, does that sound reasonable? Boards, yeah, or let's say 20 just to be safe. Um, and then discussion items. Oh, when, when are we gonna talk about the anti-racism policy? Is that during the- Under reports to the board. During the report, okay. All right, so let's, yeah, at least 20 for that because I could take some talking. Um, uh, then discussion items. What do we think? Let's say another 20 is a little optimistic. Let's say half an hour for that, please. And then do we have any new hires or resignations? We do. Okay. Um, uh, so we'll give that 10. Does that sound fair, Lindy? Yep. Good. And future agenda items. Oh, public comment will obviously take as long as it takes and we'll uh, see how that goes. Okay. Without further ado, um, we will, we have uh, four minutes of 4.1, approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 27th, 2021, a special meeting. Uh, 4.2, approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 27th, 2021, special informational. 4.3, approve the minutes of Monday, May 3rd, 2021, special informational. And 4.4, approve the minutes of Monday, May 10th, 2021, regular. Um, are there any comments on these notes? Justine, I see your hand up. Uh, yes, I was present at the April 27th meeting, and I'm not listed in there. Very good. And I seem to have a recollection of be there being some board comment on the May 3rd, but I could be wrong. I didn't take notes on that meeting, but it doesn't say in the notes that there, any, there was any board comment. I don't know if anybody yeah. else remembers. This unfortunately is not my strong suit. Um, I would need to look at my uh, notes from that night that I do not have in front of me. So, uh, should we so table? Justine, just Justine, I did see uh, on May third board comment. There was several things listed in the notes. 
Okay, I guess I'm looking at. Uh, Talks about eighty. Oh, yep, I had it mixed up with the next with May tenth. Sorry. Yep, you're right. I have them all up in front of me right now, and I had it. I just noticed that as I was flipping through. You're right. I take that back. So, okay. <laughs> but I was present at, on the twenty seventh. Good. Um, let's we can make a motion. Let's well, let's do them in order. So can we uh, have a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 27th, 2021? And let's do the second one. Approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. May I entertain a motion to accept those? Make a motion to accept the minutes of April 27th, 2021 special and the special informational. Can I have a second, please? I second that. Patrick, thank you. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Good, the ayes have it. So we've approved the first two. Um, sorry, it's, we should have done three because it's the third, fourth one that we want to change. So approve the minutes of Monday, to May 3rd, 2021, a special informational. Make a motion to and accept the minutes from May 3rd, special informational meeting. Uh, second. Somebody second, please. I, I second. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. And Nicole, sorry, do you, do you know who, who this is? We have um, who's present here. Bill Edgerton yeah. is at board and Patrick mm -hmm. Hudson is the one who's on the phone. Thank you. All right. Yep. So uh, approve the minutes. All oh, sorry. All in favor. Signify by saying aye. 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 Bill, did I hear you? Sure. Good. Thank yeah. you. All right. Uh, now, for, so we're going to approve. Uh, first, we have to amend the minutes of Monday, May 10th, 2021, to include Justine Kavakis. Could I have a motion to do that, please? Um, that was the, the 27th. Sorry, I I guess oh, I, I got, I've never I thought it would just yeah, be included <laughs> in our what we were voting on. It was the twenty seventh that I missed out on. I'm so sorry. I did not hear you, Corey. I thought it was the May tenth. Oh well. Um, okay. Um, well, let's approve these minutes. Uh, approve the minutes of Monday, May tenth, twenty twenty one, regular, and then we'll go back and we'll have to redo the twenty seventh. I make a motion to approve the minutes of May tenth. Second. Okay. Thank you, Bill. All approved. Say by aye. 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 Good. All right. So I think we'll go back. We've approved these minutes, but I think we're going to go back and approve them again. Uh, let's uh, uh, to amend the minutes of Tuesday, April 27th, 2021, to include Justine Kavakis as present. Could I have a motion for that, please? I make a motion to amend the minutes of April 27th, 2021, a special and uh, regular special informational meeting to include Justine Kavakis. A second, please. Second. second. Thank you, Bill. Uh, any discussion on that? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Might not have been a totally kosher, but we got the point across. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on now with no celebration of learning into board comments. Um, oh, I just want to make sure everybody has a chance. I'll start with you, Patrick, because I can't see you. Do you have uh, any board comment to make tonight? I don't at the, at the moment. Okay, very good. Bill, do you have any board comment? No, other than I've really appreciated a sunny day in Vermont today. This is very good. Yeah. Uh, Amy, do you have any board comment? I do. The uh, Rochester Scholarship Committee is pleased to announce that um, all the Rochester seniors who applied for scholarships received scholarships. Um, and I kind of wanted to announce those names here and their scholarships they won. If that's okay, they have been informed already. Um, Christensen uh, won the um, Sleeve Memorial Scholarship. 
Uh, John Sterling Sidaway uh, was chosen for the Martin Farms Award. And maybe hold them up just a touch longer so Nicole can, can actually see spellings and stuff. Thank you. Um. Jillian Sherwin was chosen for the Kirkpatrick Memorial Scholarship. And Nick Stevenson was also chosen for the Kirkpatrick Memorial Scholarship. So we're very excited that um, they applied and we were able to, um, it was very exciting to help further their, what they're doing next after high school, so. And Amy, I want to uh, appreciation to you too, to making this happen and uh, organizing this so it's doable again. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations to all of them. Um, I just, um, obviously my, I wanted to make a quick comment, two things. One, I wanted to say that there is a book fair coming up, um, uh, I believe at both campuses. I, I know because my wife is running the one in Rochester and I will be there with Amy on Friday afternoon. Um, but uh, please come by Friday uh, during school and then Saturday from 10 to one, I believe it is. Um, I think that's correct. Uh, a great selection of books, Bear Pond Books does this. Um, uh, the selecting for us and they really pull out some great titles um, i think it's a great time to uh, get get reading for your um, young reader in the house uh, but it is all ages it goes up through sixth grade so uh, please check it out um, and then obviously the herald captured my enthusiasm at the result of the vote um, with uh, the line fast final line um, uh, i was very happy i just wanted to th thank all the people who who um gave, uh, listen to the information to make up their mind again. Um, it's, it feels good to go forward with a strong vote of support from Stockbridge. I also want to thank um, the people who um, perhaps don't support us, but uh, you show up and you challenge us and you make us a better board. So I appreciate uh, your input enormously as well. So thank you to all. Um, Without further ado, let's move on to, oh, I didn't uh, check, sorry, Justine, do you have a board comment? No, thank you. Very good. All right, I think that's everybody, that's right. It's hard to get used to five. Uh, reports to the board, 7.1, let's start with the superintendents. Uh, good evening, team. It, uh, it's hard to believe it's June. So it's June 1st and uh, I'm pleased to report um, that it's that I'm looking forward to the next week and I don't have any budgets uh, ahead uh, to prepare a vote on. That's the first time for Tara and I since July 1. As you know, we had multiple budgets when I came on not approved. So um, that feels good. Uh, Tara will talk to you. We're starting to wrap up your end. Um, we're working diligently to ensure that we have at least uh, slight surpluses across the SU. Um, some districts are looking larger than others, and that's good. Um, and so, and the SU is looking to have a surplus for the first time in a long time. So that's positive news as well. We're in the thick of navigating um, ESSER 1, 2, and 3. Uh, ESSER 3 is getting held up mightily um in regards to just the um now that we're getting the criteria and specifications coming down from the feds we do know that it can still jamie, be used yep jamie just can you just um, i always think it's good for us to spell out yep, what the ele is. elementary secondary emergency relief act um around covid something like that it's pretty close um and so the ESSER 3 uh, money is, um, it's sort of on hold for us. So we know what we want to uh, apportion it to. I have set aside $2 million for capital improvements across the supervisory union, um, which is a big chunk of change to look to do upgrades as we've talked about across the member schools. Um, and so we're navigating that with the agency of education around when we can look to move forward. Uh, we look to act on those projects next summer is what it looks like. So 
Uh, those are my updates. We're in the thick of hiring. Um, I'm really excited about the summer plans. Uh, the more that I meet with Onda Adams, our new chief academic officer, the more excited I get. Um, I think she was a really good hire. I think she's going to support our SU well in moving us forward to the next phase of continuous improvement. Um, and I'm also pleased to let you know that we were able to focus um, some of those funds that I talked about, those recovery funds to increase uh, pathways programming. Um, and so we were able to bring a full-time pathways coordinator um, for our set, and that, that was out of those funds. And so that's exciting news. Um, what is, I'm sorry, I don't remember what pathways is. So pathways is the focus on students' personalized learning plans. And we think it's really important that we're starting to individualize and focus on personalized learning plans in the upper elementary schools. I'm also um, hyper-focused on this idea of place-based learning around personalized learning around passion projects. And so the goal would be that we would have some type of passion progress that has rigorous um, reading and writing occurring at the upper elementary grade, specifically in sixth grade, um, and that we would have some type of defense of learning and uh, be able to bring our communities in and have our community see what our sixth graders are truly capable of. And so that's going to take planning and efforts to get in, to take place across the SU. And so we're looking to start to plan and launch those um, at least some type of pilot next year, but really have those take hold in the school year 22-23. The expectation being that we have those types of projects happening across the supervisory union um, at certain grade levels, like the end of eighth grade and the sixth grade, depending on the district. Any questions for Jamie on his report? Amy? I have just a question about the um, this program you were just talking about. You are using the current ESSER funds for that program. Um, what about going uh, forward into the future? Uh, what what funds will be able to fund that program? We'll look to we'll look to you know utilize consolidated federal grant money, um, and you know so what we I also hope that as our system becomes better, we have a lot of intervention in the consolidated federal grant. I'd like to see that start to decrease. If you look at the number of interventionists we have across the SU, it's pretty high. And so we, I hope that we can use some of that consolidated federal grant for more of these types of positions that service, you know, all students around pushing our rigor forward. Um, and so I would look to keep those positions in place. But I think if you look across the SU, we should see intervention numbers start to drop over the next few years as our universal system increases. So that will free up local funds and also um, title funds. That's a great uh, question. Yeah, actually, I appreciate you letting me expand upon it. Justine, do you have any questions for our superintendent? Nope. I'll get back to her. Patrick, do you have any questions for our superintendent? Uh, I don't. He uh, explained everything really well. Thank you. Bill, do you have any questions for our superintendent? No, I'm all set. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, Jamie, just two things. Um, um, and I, you may have said this in a meeting before. When do we think we'll be getting the estimates for the uh, energy efficiency work on the elementary and Stockbridge elementary buildings? So I can't put that out for request for qualifications until the AOE uh, does prior approval of the concept, Ethan. Okay. And they notified us literally on Friday that they're not going to be ready to do prior approval until August. And so I don't want to put that out to bid because it jeopardizes our ability to use those federal monies. Gotcha. And so gotcha. with ESSER 3, the AOE has to provide prior approval to any project concept before we can go out to bid. Um, okay. And so we don't want to jeopardize that. So what we'll do is put this concept to them. I don't see any, re we've talked to them already about the concepts. Mm -hmm. um, most of them have to do with our heating system, HVAC systems, fresh air around windows, all those things. So that I'm, I'm positive, as positive as I can be, that they're going to allow us to utilize that 2 million, but I need their prior mm -hmm. approval before going forward. Um, 
are we do we have or have we had identified any critical issues um as far as facing next winter if if all this not at, not at rochester elementary no okay okay and and stockbridge neither Thanks. nothing no. no our sub's actually in pretty, i mean i've got a couple other districts actually that we're gonna have to do some work on this summer uh mm -hmm. no matter what because i was concerned about their ability to to remain open next winter if we didn't but that's not that's not what we're facing for your two buildings okay um, I know last week at the SU meeting, you discussed the uh, lack of applicants for uh, support staff, I believe it was, um, that there was, um, was that, is that the correct, and I just think I'd, I'd love to, for the board to just hear what's going on there and your, your take on that. We have Absolutely. several openings, yeah, no, we have several openings for um paraprofessionals and also school admin positions across the SU. Um, and um, I'm concerned partly because we are competing right now with the public sector here locally. And by all accounts, the information I'm receiving is, is that folks are doing signing bonuses and that their starting rates are significantly higher than we're able to offer. Um, and so we're competing with the same type of worker. Um, and so I remain concerned about filling, filling some of those support staff positions. Uh, I'm also worried if you go on school spring, there is a zillion interventionist positions right now because districts are looking to leverage um, their recovery funds to get more interventionists in front of students. And we're also in the market for math interventionists across the SU, but also on special educators. I've also heard um, that some folks are deciding to leave the special ed field to do intervention uh, because with that comes a lot less paperwork and case management. Um, and so that's a concern for me too, um, is the special ed market. So we're trying to act fast when we get high quality candidates in front of us in those areas. Um, you know, I remind myself it's only June 1st. Um, but know that, you know, we just refresh ads again. And uh, I know there's an, actually an interview for a special educator um, tomorrow. So we're hopeful there. You guys are pretty well staffed in regards to special ed. Um, good. So we're in pretty good shape in our set right now. Good. Thank you much. Uh, if there are no further questions for the superintendent, we'll move on to our principals. Yeah, so you have our report in front of you. Um, there's quite a bit going on, as there typically is in the end of the year. And I should say, typically, I think we kind of forgot what the end of the year was like. <laughs> because of COVID and being virtual last year. At least that's what I keep reminding myself as so many things come so quickly. Um, I just wanted to re-emphasize a couple of things that Book Fair um, with Courtney Bowen's help is coming to both Stockbridge and Rochester, which has been great. She and Donna Gallant have been working together on that. Um, so that will be Friday in-house. I don't know about Saturday in Stockbridge, but I do know it's Saturday in Rochester as well. Um, a couple of um, kind of grants. Stockbridge received a food, federal food service grant to replace the freezer in the kitchen, which is always great to get us ahead um, not have to try and budget for those sorts of things. And then just really active. We're trying to be creative around things like end of the year music concerts because we can't fully open those up to families. So we'll be streaming those using Facebook Live so families can watch at a different time. Um, and then before you know it, the end of the year will be here. The 17th is the kids last day and it's a half day. And yeah. Good. Uh, questions for our principals. Amy? Um, yes. Is there any announcement for the public in regards to sixth grade graduation? I don't think anything has been put out there as to location and times and who is um, allowed to attend. All of that's going home in the parent newsletter tomorrow. Okay, great. Um, I don't know. Okay, we'll look forward to that. And in the, I think it'll be in like the class newsletter, Amy, but also the school one that gets emailed out in Rochester. Okay, um, great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Justine, do you have any questions for our principals? 
No, I don't. Thank you. Bill, do you have any question for our principals? Yeah, on the graduation, is the public invited to the graduation ceremonies at either school? Currently, we're just keeping it to family members, Bill, to comply with COVID guidelines. But if something changes, we will let you all know because <laughs> okay. it's ever evolving. Okay, so that those guidelines don't include board members, board directors? Uh, I'd, love, I'd love to attend. I don't know off the top of my head, but let me get, sure. can I get back to you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Let me find out. I don't want to make a hassle or whatever, but. Uh, no hassle. There. No hassle at all. It suddenly gave me a, reminded me of the image of the drive-by last year. With the yeah. school buses yeah. going around the green. That was. Right. Loved, I love the innovation we came up with. Which I think was yeah. very exciting. And if the public is not able to attend, I know that we, the students would really enjoy that type of support and some of the extended family and friends who are not able to actually physically attend would, would enjoy that. Yeah, maybe we could do that again, um, if that's a possibility. But, uh, Patrick, do you have any questions for our principals? I don't, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, principals. Let us move on to our business manager. Hello, Tara. Hello, everyone. So you have my report, highlights of it. Uh, later on in your meeting, you'll be hopefully reviewing and approving your tax anticipation note for FY22. Budget collections for the Agency of Education started today, and we have to file for anyone that was already met the 30-day wait, and then once each district stops their 30-day wait, we then file that with the Agency of Education. And on Thursday, I'll be working with our software company to complete our fiscal year rollover. Uh, the pre-audit is done for FY21, and we're scheduled for final audit the first week of September. And School Food Authority, we continue our monthly reimbursements. Lindy shared that Stockbridge was awarded the Food Service Equipment Grant. And then we are also continuing to work with our auditors and the Child Nutrition Program on the ins and outs of what we need to do to complete the centralization of food service. Our Child Nutrition Program team is working very hard to get a collaborative menu together for the start of school. So they've been working, doing a lot of work on that and going over um, special events that they do in each building and how they can incorporate that. So they're all working really hard on that part of it. And then the next round of the PEBT benefits will be due soon. So we've got some additional guidance on some additional benefits that I'm reading through now to find out what we need to do to get that information out to families. And then on to your revenue and expenditure summary. On the expenditure changes, I updated your COVID expenses from 12,461 to zero, updated your legal services overage from 10,794 to 11,344, updated field trips and transportation savings from 3,500 to 2,913 because you've done a couple of small trips in there. You updated your book savings from 21,148 to 23,829. Updated tech hardware software savings from 16725 to 20250 Updated tech supply savings from 5095 to 5315 Updated contracted service savings from 26779 to 44152 Updated the general supply savings from 29887 to 31031 Updated tuition, your budget versus invoice to date savings from 45,750 to 10,131. We received a couple of tuition invoices that have come in since the last report. Updated the tuition reimbursement professional development savings from 17,457 to 6,785 as your teachers get prepared and get their files in for their summer professional development. Updated trash and snow removal savings from 4,992 to 1,812. Added dues and fees savings of 8,468,000. 8 Added equipment savings of 2,500. 
added fuel oil savings of 8,380, added long-term interest savings of 1,504, and then added your staff travel savings of 2,458. On the revenue side, only change I made was to update the COVID side of it to match the expenses. And the reason why the COVID expenses have been removed from your general fund is we received the accounting requirements from the Agency of Education on how we have to track the revenue and expenditures in special revenue and special expense funds outside of your general fund. So that's no longer in your general fund. The changes that I just outlined increase the expenditure surplus from 110,443 to 120,552 and increase the revenue deficit from 98,637 to 111,098 resulting in an overall projected surplus of $9,454 which is a slight reduction from the May projection which was 11,807. Any questions on any of that? Uh, Bill, you want to start with you? Any questions? Sure. Um, Tara, so we've got a basically 9,500 projected surplus um, at the end of this year. That's a projection. Um, when combined with prior year surpluses, where, where are we ending up? I don't have that figure, Bill, but I can happily email that to you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, Bill? No. Um, Patrick? No. Uh, nope. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Justine? I don't think so. Nope. Amy? Uh, yeah, a couple of quick questions. Um, so as Lindy had said and knew as well that uh, Stockbridge was awarded um, grant money for a freezer, which is wonderful. So um, how... Is that accounting expense through a special fund as, as lo uh, along with the uh, grant money that was received or would I see that in through the general fund? That's in your enterprise fund under food service. So, so it's, not, um, it's not included in your general fund at all. It's not, so it's not on my spreadsheet here at all. Okay, nope. so both the revenue part of it and the expense part of it would be in the um, food service yeah, that's part of your enterprise fund. It's tracked separately because it's a grant. So the expense has to match the grant award. So that basically washes the revenue and expense out in the enterprise fund. Okay. And um, I'm assuming that that is uh, the same with the uh, removing the COVID into a special fund uh, as well. And they will um, essentially, they will cancel each other out essentially because the amount of expense will match the. Um, okay. What we receive back in reimbursement. Yep. Okay. Um, great. Um, and could you tell me, uh, what dues and fees are to the tune of savings of, uh, $8,400? I can get you the detail, Amy. I don't have that with me. Okay. I, I didn't know if you had, if it was like one thing or if it was, a, a no, you have dues and fees in every function code of your school. So every department meaning function has its own dues and fees that are okay. allocated to that in your budget building, and they just haven't been used this year. Some of the typical uses of that can be field trip ticket, items of that nature. Um, some of the principal accounts have dues and fees that they're responsible to pay each year. We've seen some reduction in some of those dues and fees because of COVID, but I can't give you specifics. Um, I don't have access to that report where I'm at home right now. And you don't need to send it to me. You answer my question. I mean, it's essentially spread out throughout the entire budget. And this yep. is the, the, the total amount. Um, okay, that is wonderful. And I think uh, that is the only questions I have for you. Thank you very much. And Jamie, to answer your comment, yes, I will send it to the entire board. Good. Thank you. Any further questions for our business manager? All right. There being none, let us move on to the WRVSU Policy Committee Anti-Racism Policy Draft Number 3. So um, Ethan has joined the SU Policy Committee. 
Uh, and this policy um, started back in the fall. Originally, um, well, it really started back in the spring of last year, the admin team put out a letter around equity um, for WRVSU. And so this originally started off as an equity policy. Uh, there were community forums. We had about 50 people participate way back in the fall. Um, there was a couple different evenings that we offered just WRVSU-Y virtual forums. And based on that feedback, there was a decision to move toward an anti-racism policy. And this is draft three of that policy. Um, the policy committee provided feedback on this policy last week and then decided to put it out to the local boards to get additional feedback. Um, so this is really the second reading of the policy. And uh, we would look to move it to a third reading in August with potential adoption after we get feedback this month from all the local district boards. Um, and so I've already received some feedback. I, I've been gathering that information. It goes into a folder and will go to the policy committee um, for their June meeting to talk about if there's any revisions they wanna make for draft four. Um, and then tonight, I was hoping to have a discussion um, and see if there's anything of substance that folks are looking to change or provide feedback on. Um, and if folks feel like they want to go ahead and mark it up themselves and then send it to me, that's fine too. Some folks have done that. Um, and that's helpful because I put it, like I said, in a folder. That's a working folder for the policy committee. And then the policy committee uses that to inform whether or not they want to make any additional revisions. Ethan, did I so, miss anything? Uh, no, no, I think that's, um, um, there was general feeling among the policy and among the SU board that this was uh, going in a very good direction. There were some itemized notes uh, from some of the board members uh, moving forward. So obviously, you know, we're going in the right direction was the feeling, but we're not there quite yet. Um, I also think it's appropriate to mention that there was some, um, there was some uh, strong pushback um, uh, during the policy committee meeting um, from some people who felt that, um, and I want to get this right, that this was uh, institutionalizing sort of, um, well, to some extent, political activism, um, which they felt was inappropriate for the school. Um, that they also were curious about instances being proving that this was needed. And I put this out there, not as my opinion, but just what I uh, heard. Uh, for further details, you could check the notes, uh, minutes of the policy committee meeting, which was held, was it last Thursday, Wednesday. I guess? Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday from 5, 5, uh, five to 6 o'clock, um, if, you, if you're interested in, in what some of those comments were. Um, I, ha I have some comments myself uh, just about language. Um, I, I think a really good way for me to think about this when I was looking at it was, okay, you hand this to a teacher. Does, do the, does he or she or they have a clear uh, roadmap of how to, how to move forward? Or does the administrator have a clear roadmap? Um, are there any confusions? Are there any contradictions? So I would really appreciate all of your as a policy committee member, but also I think this is our job, is to really take a look at this and um, uh, a, a, anything. I, I really think any 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 instincts you have about it uh, is important. And then, of course, now if you if you, if there's further discussion at this point, that's certainly um, open. Anybody have any uh, comments for Jamie at this point? Um, Justine, oh, Bill, go ahead. I just want to say it's. In my opinion, this is totally appropriate, necessary um, policy. Uh, I think I commend the policy committee working so hard on this, as well as our uh, under Jamie's leadership. Um, and by going through this and articulating these in the level of detail, and Ethan, I agree with you that so that it can be usable when it gets into the classroom, just brings out uh, questions and concerns and issues that is, are educational in and of themselves. So I think that's, that's why we have public schools and that's why we deal with 
issues and not every issue we deal with is not necessarily popular, uh, but they need to be um, articulated and dealt with. So I support this effort very much. Good, further comments? And, you know, I understand I'm study. Uh, Patrick, any comment yet for Jamie? Uh, not, not as of right now. Um, I'm still been looking things over a little bit, and mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no. As of right now, everything looks really good to me, and I I strongly support this as well. Uh, Justine, I don't have any questions. I'm still um, digesting it. I would like to spend a little more time with it, mm -hmm. um, but I am absolutely in support of it. I think. Um, I think there's a lot going on in other places in the country where, whereas um, perhaps our students may not have experienced the extent of what is outlined in this, you know, very detailed document. Um, they hear about it and they learn about it and they see it on Facebook and they hear their parents talking about it. So um, yeah. this is a really great way to, to teach children um, about the, the climate of the of the news and how to how to deal with that and teach teachers how to deal with that when these topics come up. So, um, yeah, I really love it. I think it's great. I, I, I do. I do have a quick question, actually. Um, <clears throat> I guess so. You had mentioned like this policy is something that will be placed in the teacher's hands. Now, is this something that is going to kind of be addressed with the students themselves as a whole um or is it just if something arises or i'm just trying to understand for, for as a student how, what does it look like for them so the procedures get into number one we need to continue to do pd around this topic um with our teachers and uh, so just for the, pd is professional professional development, development yep uh, with our teachers, and um, we've got a group of about 40 teachers right now in the supervisory union, um, of which I believe both your principals were part of, um, that have been doing this work every Thursday night. Um, and so that work's happening. The idea is to have uh, teachers and administrators across the SU who can be teacher leaders in this area, Patrick. And so once we have our teachers feeling comfortable around what's in this policy and the procedures of it, then what I think it is, it's, it's about following the procedures. And the procedures are accompany the policy because without the po with the procedures, I don't think that the policy means much. Um, and yeah. so I think the procedures articulate that roadmap as we move forward on how we go about addressing the concerns in the policy. Um, and in this third, what I like, what I appreciate about, about the third draft is it's, really focused on creating a safe school environment, um, which is what we were focused on to start out with. Um, and I think it addressed some of the concerns folks had around the SU uh, originally with draft two, around feeling like it wasn't uh, focused enough on how do we go about that work. And I think how we go about that work is creating a really respectful and responsible safe learning environment and just educating folks so they understand what racism is and isn't. Because what I think I see often in our SU is that we do have racist acts, they do occur, um, and that a lot of that has to do with us not having educated folks about how those acts could have been a violation of our harassment policy. Um, I, you know, I, I think that at times it was due to a lack of us helping folks understand how that action was a clear violation and resulted in uh, us substantiating harassment. So that's what I'm looking at is how do we go about teaching that and how those acts could be defined as, as such. Okay, no, that makes sense. Um, no, I guess the main reason I was just kind of curious as far as the students is because obviously in some homes there is racism, um, you know, and, so how, how to kind of navigate um, what a kid is seeing at home and what, you know, what our policies are and, and what, what we expect. 
um, and how to try and navigate a situation where a kid may, may be getting different information at home. <clears throat> Well, of course, that can also apply to reading. You know, can apply to what? A, Sorry, a, a, to reading or to other to doing schoolwork in general yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. So, I mean, that, absolutely. it is. I think this is part of you know we make decisions, and the board is very much a, a, a is very much a part of this. That we are the policy mm -hmm. makers of our district. And we establish, in some ways, the guy, some of the guidelines, along with the SU, for how we believe our school should um, should approach our students and should educate our students. And um, this might not have been a policy that was part of education 30 years ago, but today it's a, a yeah. different time. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Um, Amy, uh, Patrick, you're all set? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Amy, any, any comments or questions for Jamie or me? Uh, no, I, I do not. I, I agree with everything that's been said here so far. I, I like the direction that this is going and I think it looks good. Um, so good. I would, I would just, I would really encourage people to, to study it, um, you know, take a look at it. With this idea in mind, I think the guideline that you know we're we're trying to create a safe campus, um, safe campuses for our students and our and our faculty and our staff, and um, also as as Patrick points out, an educational document that will um, bring everyone into an understanding. Good. Let's move on. Uh, 7.5 WRVSU Energy Committee. Jamie, this is back to you again. Yeah, so the Energy Committee has been working diligently uh, to analyze the usage of energy across all the member schools. And so that is just about complete. I mentioned that at the SU uh, meeting. And so you're going to get uh, probably later this week, I just got to check with the chair of that committee, a document to review between now and the June board meeting, the SU full board meeting. And I'm gonna ask Chris Riley, who's been, who's chairing that group to put together a report and talk about it at the full board. So what you'll see is energy usage at each building, both in heating fuel and electricity, um, and how that compares to the other uh, member buildings of the SU. And so, that will also help inform us as we look to go, excuse me, to pursue a performance contract, whether their projected savings um, that they're projecting makes sense to us. So I think it's our own data point that we'll have. Uh, that group meets on the second Thursday of the month. Um, it's, uh, it's a working group. Um, we, we've accomplished quite a bit in two meetings. Um, I will also let you know there was a lot of talk about solar that group discussed that we shouldn't pursue any other solar options until we finish our energy audits and see whether or not that's a recommendation for us in regards to finding further efficiency as part of that larger plan, um, which made a good deal of sense to me. Because right now we had just have multiple solar projects in different districts. Um, and so we're looking at analyzing that data as well. And so Chris also pulled that data together to see whether or not the uh, results of those um, partnerships have been playing out to what we hope to. So I'm gonna send it to you, look it over, and then Chris will give a full report um, at the June full board meeting. Oh, June full board meeting, thank you. Yep. So later this month, yep. 28th, Good. I believe it is. Any, any questions for a superintendent on this committee? Bill? No, I don't. Thank you. Amy? No, Justine? Thank you. No, thank you. Patrick? No, thank you. Okay, good. Let's move on to our discussion items. 8.1 results of the reconsideration vote for the decoupling of RSUD. <laughs> Who would like to take the lead on this? Woohoo, I'll say again. 
Um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'll, I, I guess I'll say that it was, you know, the numbers for me were encouraging, um, that it was a clear, you know, vote to stay in. I, I don't think it's a, you know, I think we've got our, well, we, things are very different. I have a feeling like since they were a year ago, um, for many reasons, not only because of this vote, but our board is different. Um, our, our focuses, I believe, are different. And obviously with the um, with Jamie coming in, um, the change that's happening at the SU level as well. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm very positive going forward, but I'd, I'd sort of love to hear some other comments or feelings about where we are now because of this vote. Um, I'm gonna comment. Patrick, go for it. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I was actually, I was really, really happy with the results. Um, I thought it actually went even better than I was uh, expecting considering the first time around, uh, which is really good because in my eyes it meant that people that were really getting the right information. Um, but <laughs> There's, there are still people in the community that, that really think that they were kind of gypped in a way and um, and uh, they think that the people were lied to and, and kind of forced to vote this way. And so I'm you know as a board member, I'm trying to handle and figure out how to how to navigate conversations with some of these people when you know i don't necessarily think that that's the case at all i think that people did get the right information and better information the second go around um so i'm just kind of interested in, in what what your take is on that um as as the rest of the board yeah i my sense is that um it was truly a team effort. And I don't use those words lightly. I'm a, I like to see myself as somewhat as a coach and our job is to bring together a team. And in this case, I wasn't the coach. I was a, a member of that team, but we pulled together a team that really made a difference. Um, not only were we united, um, but we each played vital roles in getting the facts of why that the merger and keeping the merger is so vital for these two communities, not only the the educational communities, but also for um, whether you're a taxpayer or a property owner. Um, and that's that's very heartening. And I think one of the lessons learned was the power of being together in a team, whether it's the principals, the teachers, the PTO, the superintendent, the, the select board of our community, um, they all pulled uh, in the same direction on that. And I think, um, Ethan, you're right. And this is a time to kind of say, um, we can do it Stockbridge and we can do it in partnership with Rochester and together we're gonna be stronger and more successful in creating uh, genuine educational opportunities and greater outcomes for our students. And that's why we're all here. Um, that said, I think we've got a, a challenge ahead to keep that team going and to keep the education results moving in the right direction. And I'm looking forward to our discussion about um, the third quarter test results. Um, the articles of agreement talk about five years, and then we're going to take a look at what's taken place over those five years. And I think we all need to, and I'm sure we're committed to, but we're going to need to deliver on those those outcomes. Um, so it's, it's clear that uh, the merger is working uh, for everyone. And hopefully with uh, those outcomes, then we can pull together and and communicate those outcomes to all the vital uh, members of our of our community and i'm i'm very hopeful that we can do that and uh, so i'm i'm pleased and hopeful thank you Ethan, you're muted. Muted, yeah, sorry. Justine, any comment? You leaned forward. I thought you were going. Oh, 
um yeah i i mean uh to piggyback on what patrick was uh, was talking about I, i've certainly experienced the same the same thing not so much um after this vote but generally having the same types of conversations as he was describing and uh one one thing that um ethan pointed out is it is a different group of people there's there's different people doing different things and um, the work that we're doing is a little bit different than it was when everyone felt lied to a long time ago. So I feel hopeful um, moving forward. Uh, we've done a lot of work on the articles. We've studied them. We've talked to the community. We've opened doors that were not necessarily open for dialogue and questions. And I look forward to engaging in those ways moving forward so we can build a good team that does include community members and um, maybe some of the community members who might not be super on board right now we can um, talk to them and and try to work with them and do our best to make a, a, a strong team that's not just a small pack so i'm i'm hopeful and excited amy Any comments, Amy? No, I don't really have any comment. Thank you. I'm I'm happy okay. to um to be through it so that we can not focus on that anymore. We can focus back on our kids and, and their education. Well, I just want to reiterate what I said earlier that I I, I believe that our um, the people who challenge this merger um, have actually been some of the people who have fomented some of the change that has gone on and some of the new openness. So I, I, I've always been one to welcome a critique um, and someone who disagrees with me. Um, I've, I've always tried to be straight with people about my point of view and where I stand on it. Um, where, you know, we basically ask people to believe in this merger and to go forward. We've obviously, you know, that's a challenge. We've got to make it work. And uh, I, I, I believe we will. I think with Lee, Lindy and, and Jamie's leadership, you know, we're in a good position. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, keep, you know, obviously keep tabs on us and, um, and, and let us know how you feel, how we're doing. Um, uh, I, hope, I hope we continue to earn people's respect and support as we go forward. Good, any other comments, administration, Jamie, or we think we're good? No, I just, I, you know, as I said, I'm really looking at us working hard as a team uh, to focus on delivering the promises that were put out early on. That's, you know, better programming, better results for kids at a fiscally responsible manner. Um, and that's, that's what I'm going to look for us to try to do and to, to prevail with that. Good. Let's move on then. Um, 8.2, Spring Academic Achievement Date Report. Uh, achievement Date Report. I'm not sure how that's supposed to say but... data. <laughs> What's that? What? It's supposed to say data report. Data report. Well, that makes more sense. That was date a test. Report. Achievement Date a... Report. We're not going to get, no, I'm not even going to go where date report could be. Uh, principals born in Stetson will review the 2021 academic report. Yes, so we just finished several testing windows, um, one of which is our ASPEC testing window, which you don't see here yet. We'll have for you in August. Um, it's still embargoed, which means results are starting to come back from that on our students in grades three through six. Um, so we'll be able to share those results in August with folks. Um, and students also were assessed using STAR 360 in our benchmark assessment, assessment excuse me, with um, Fontes and Pinnell for literacy. Um, so as you can see, we kind of throughout the course of the year, you know, starting with our fall data and where kids came back from um, in the fall. And then we've talked about the winter data as well, and we're seeing it some great gains when you look at our younger group in the winter. And then in the spring, we're still about 50%. So we're right around where we were um, in the winter. And then we did see quite a bit of growth in our third through sixth graders in their fluency and comprehension skills, which is what's tested in that benchmark assessment and continual growth in our primary grades. What's 
different this report that we really want to emphasize is if you scroll down right to this reading growth by scaled score. So that comes from our star 360 score. And the idea is that we're trying to show you, um, you know, how much growth a cohort has in a year, because when you have such small numbers, when we do percentages, all it takes is like one or two kids sometimes to flip flop that percentage. But what we really need to see is some of our kiddos and our cohorts sometimes growing more than a year to be able to close gaps. So when you look sorry. at this, uh, uh, Sorry, just a question. Uh, what do you mean when you say cohorts? Like just grade three. We're going to track you. them all the way through or fourth grade. Thank you. Okay. So this when wasn't you, yep. yep, absolutely. So when you look through at this first, um, you know, at their reading growth by scaled score, they should grow um, at X amount a week as a reader in taking this. And you can see this tremendous growth specifically um, in sixth grade, how much they grew from winter before we shut down pre-COVID to now spring. So we've seen great gains in our sixth graders and a lot of the gaps they've closed as well as in that fourth grade group that means they've grown over a year in their reading ability um, and then some, so to speak. Can I just jump in? Yes. So another way for you guys to look at your scale score growth, and this is something we're gonna educate folks on and use more and more, because I think it's a better way for us to measure growth um, in our smaller schools than just looking at percentages, is that your current uh, third graders in our SUD are performing this spring where the current sixth graders performed last winter as fifth graders. Hmm. So your current third graders are performing essentially two grade levels better um, than what we were seeing just last year. So those are the numbers you want to start to track. Um, if you can look your fourth grade, your, your fourth graders currently we're scoring well under last winter what the current third graders did. So they scored a 101 last winter, and now they're up to a 565. So that's good. That's huge gain. So we had, saw tremendous gain and rebound from fourth graders. Do you um, think that's due to COVID or? No, these scores were prior to COVID, Patrick. Um, they are. I think the yeah, I think the principals can talk about why that is. Um, I think part of it is we're really focusing on improving our universal instruction. I think that's starting to pay off. Um, there's a ways to go. Um, but I do think that the intervention with fidelity and the high quality universal instruction ensuring that we're providing instruction uh, five days a week, um, that we're seeing that payoff. And this was the second year of the reading work, really. Right. Um, and so, you know, it really takes two to three years to take hold. Um, you know, last winter, you had just started that work and that work didn't stop due to COVID. That work continued. Mm -hmm. Patrick, Sounds pretty Matt, incredible, really. <laughs> Patrick, this is Bonnie. I, I would add to something that Jamie and Lindy said is I think a, a large amount of this growth can be attributed to exactly what Jamie said. The district has taken a focus to reading. And when we say with fidelity, we mean the things that are supposed to be taught are actually taught for the amount of time they're supposed to be taught. Um, mm -hmm. That teachers are much more attuned to um, looking at what is it that I'm responsible for specifically. Teachers always worked hard. Teachers were always very creative. I think what we, what happened to us is that we sort of started to diverge away from maybe some of the essential skills, particularly in the early grades. And the professional development work we've been doing has brought a much, uh, a much more specific focus on that. So I think you can anticipate seeing these scores continue to improve. The other That's thing great. that I'll say that we're seeing is that we're seeing those upper grades, that fourth, fifth, and sixth grade group, especially in both buildings, are really closing a lot of gaps with just the universal instruction, so the classroom instruction happening with a literacy block containing everything that it's supposed to, and they're closing gaps that way, which means we can in turn take our interventionists 
and really start to focus on our primary grades, like our kindergarten through second grade, and catch kids early. And the earlier we can catch and add additional supports because maybe there's just one concept that's not clicking for them, the sooner we can close gaps instead of before we started this literacy block, there were kids that were going extended periods of time, kind of trying to do the same thing over and over and it was never really closing any gaps. But just uh, you know, did you notice with them uh, before before this was implemented, were they having a hard time, say the sixth graders moving on to, to middle school? Um, hmm, I'm trying to think. I don't have quite enough to speak to that right now, yeah. but I, I, I will be curious as something for us to watch for, Patrick, as we start to move mm -hmm. forward, like how each group adjusts um, yeah. the longer we've had this. That's a great question. Uh, Lindy, I had a question. Bill. Sorry. Yeah, Bill, go ahead. Um, what is protocol? Do I raise a hand or push a button or just yeah, barge raise in? a hand is best. Um, just that like that. It's, yeah, it just keeps the, the meeting organized. If I can sort of focus each time, and, and then we know the person, the presenter, is done to this or the thing. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Bill. You. Thank you, Lindy. Um, you talked about the key uh, focus going forward is is the K through through the primary grades, what's our strategy in, in accomplishing that coming up this fall? Um, we're still working on it. And the reason I say that is because we're about to spend some professional development time this summer, um, because in one, um, because we have some people shifting in what grade levels they're teaching in Rochester, and we have some new teachers. So we're going to have to build on that and train those newer teachers up with the same thing that everybody else has received. Um, and then one focus will really be on um, phonological awareness and decoding skills and being able to uh, break those down for kids to help with. That's definitely well, a point of can you just find, I'm sorry, can you just define what those are, please, Lindy? Sure, so phonological awareness or decoding, uh, some people might know it as phonics. It's how we all learn to break down. So when we say see the word cat, it's how we know what sounds to make in our brain to make the word cat. And that comes through a lot of structured teaching and explicit instruction. So it's very clear on how that works. Um, some kids grasp it fairly quickly and some students really need it broken down. So that is a key area of emphasis. Good. Uh, Jamie, oh, sorry. Oh wait, uh, Bonnie, were you going to respond? Yeah, I was just going to add one thing. I, I think another thing that that Jamie has brought to our district that is that is critical is I know when I first arrived here, there was it. There were way too many youngsters who weren't who just weren't making it in terms of literacy and mathematics, um, and there didn't seem to be a hue and cry necessarily about that. Jamie has helped us in a in a really non-threatening way, look at the data and say, look, with good tier one instruction, which is the tier one instruction is instruction um, delivered by the classroom teacher, about 90% of our kids should be being successful. And, and we were quite a distance away from that. So part of it is this philosophical belief that most of our kids should be being successful in school. And Jamie referenced that when he was talking, Amy, when he was answering your question about about how the pathways position would be paid for in the future. We do have a significant number of interventionists. And what that means is we have a significant number of youngsters who have some lagging skills and need additional support. And our focus or the focus moving forward is going to be to have fewer and fewer and fewer youngsters who are not successful from tier one instruction. Or another way to say that is more youngsters who are successful from tier one instruction fewer youngsters that need intervention. Thank you. Jamie. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I mean, when we look at literacy, my goal would be is that um, we start spending a lot more time explicitly teaching writing in the upper elementary grades uh, and that students are reading to write. And so that's where I got into when I talked about that pathways coordinator. I think it, when we wanna get our students uh, to read and write, we need to engage them in what they're interested in. Um, and also around high quality uh, nonfiction texts. So, 
you know, what I'm looking for in those upper primary grades is, is that at the end of the grade three, we know that kids are reading to learn. And that, so then in grades four, five, six, we're not still teaching kids how to read or teaching kids how to comprehend, how to look at complex vocabulary and to how to write uh, so that they can convey, the, they convey their thoughts and ideas. Um, we know that's a critical skill for success. So um, I think right now we're still playing that catch up bill where we're still having to spend what I believe to be too much time on explicit teaching and reading in those upper elementary grades. I'd like to see us spending more time on teaching students how to be really strong communicators via written expression. So um, that's the work ahead. We know we're not there, but um, that's where we look to get to. Oh, thank you. Amy? Oh, you're muted, Amy. Bummer. Okay. Did you hear my first part? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jamie. That's very exciting for what you're saying. I, I think this, this is a wonderful direction to be going in. And this is just wonderful to hear. My question is on the um, reading growth scale score, um, looking at these numbers, um, in grade three, should they be scoring in the 300s, in grade four, in the 400s? Um, how am I comparing that? I mean, I understand what you're saying, uh, that the third graders are scored higher this year than what the last year third graders scored at the end of the year. So that's wonderful to see that, that they've, they're so much higher and it's wonderful to see the improvement. Um, but where, what are the, what should the numbers average be, I guess? Lindy, so you, buy, do you want me to answer this, Lindy? If you know it off the top of your head, go for it. I have to I'm look pretty, it up. I'm, I think I'm pretty accurate. And Lindy can look it up and correct me if I'm wrong. Is that, yes, you're going to want to see the upper uh, score in the hundreds based on the grade level. So the upper 300s, the higher up you are, the higher percentile are. So I bet you the, that grade three score you have there is right around the 50th percentile. Not percent, percentile. Meaning that they score, you know, if you look across this norm reference assessment, they're about at the halfway point as compared to peers in the third grade. When you look at your sixth graders, that's well above the 50th percentile. They're probably more up into the 70th percentile, which is where I'd like to see us. Um, that's actually, your sixth graders is a huge celebration. Yeah, that's my daughter's class. So but, <laughs> a contribution towards that. And I'm very proud of, of that class for working hard on that. Uh, it, it does. Uh, sorry, uh, I just wanted to make sure we got to everybody first. Uh, Justine, do you have a comment? No, thanks. It's very interesting. I'm just listening. Thank you. Um, obviously, the uh, my only comment is obviously the individual teacher understands you know, this is a, a, a curve of a sort, you know, that we've got so many kids are doing so well, but obviously there's, you know, the, the two or three or whatever, depending on the class, who aren't doing as, as, as well. And the, this number sort of looks at the overall, as you say, cohort, not at the individual. But you, you, you know, you know from your report and your work with the teacher who the individuals who are struggling are. Right. I'd say the biggest mindset that we're working with teachers on right now is to not one of the reports that STAR gives you is grade equivalency. And teachers often get themselves caught up in looking at that as a data point. But instead, we're trying to look at how much kids have grown, like, you know, at, based on the size of our our schools, we know some kiddos that may have started behind, especially the beginning of this year, based on what last spring was like to see some of those kids grow almost two grade levels over the course of a year is a yep. huge celebration. But then also that same chunk of data gives us really deep dive specifics into those areas that they're still, they, ha they have some understanding of, but it's not necessarily right at the tip of their tongue as they practice it independently. So that's what um, we can analyze this in a lot of different ways, but that's one we're really trying to work on with teachers. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, for the oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. 
I was just going to uh, say, we can't forget about math. Bonnie won't let us. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Us. <laughs> yeah, no, happy. So as you can see from our math, uh, this is grades first grade through sixth grade in this data. Um, and at the fall, we were about 25, 75% split. Uh, we made a little bit of a jump in the winter. And then if we scroll down, Ray, we've made some more gains um, in our proficiency. But again, going back to um, our mathematics scale, so that scale score again, um, you can see um, we've made some great improvement, some steady improvement, I would say, not quite as much a growth rate as we saw in literacy um, in our students, especially considering we haven't really deep dive like taking a deep dive into professional development around mathematics instruction. And that's where one of our focal points is gonna be this summer in our professional development um, is really focusing on our universal, so every classroom instruction, what are our norms, making sure every kid gets the same type of explicit instruction within a math block is probably the biggest, and Bonnie can speak to this more than I can, but is the biggest, um, it just depends which classroom you walk into right now, what comes out of a math block. And we need to make that more universal or the same mm -hmm. for all our students. Uh, a question uh, going back a little bit. Um, you mentioned, you know, we, we are going to have a lot of new hires in Rochester and some in some significant ones in Stockbridge as well. Um, uh, uh, are we? Do you anticipate a, a, a loss because of new training, people coming in, taking on new programs, or you know, um, I don't we already have it arranged for folks to meet with Amy Toth for a literacy coach, so they understand the basics of our literacy block, and that falls on me as an instructional leader to make sure that those folks are set up so we can hit the ground running. And um, it's going to take some time. It's exciting, but it shouldn't come at a loss to our kids. Those are just the expectations when we walk in the door and we've got to meet them together. And Ethan, one of the things we looked for in hiring when we sat in hiring committees to hire new folks was their, um, their sincere interest in learning, their sincere interest in wanting to roll up their sleeves, delve in and learn more about, about literacy, about mathematics. Um, so it, it will be a big change. We are bringing in a number, as Lindy said, of new people, but she's already on summer planning. Um, and there will be uh, continued support for folks throughout the school year. Uh, so certainly the, the strong desire is that, that we won't see any loss uh, from our youngsters. Good. Uh, any other comments about the math numbers here? No. Okay. I think we're, I think we've done that. Thank you very much to all of you. Uh, uh, yes, good yes, yes. Oh, sorry, Amy. Sorry. I didn't see the hand up. Go for it. No, Amy. Uh, I, this has been a wonderful conversation and I do not want to um, take away from it, but you assigned me for timekeeper. So I'm just being conscious of this job that you assigned me. <laughs> we have plenty more to talk about. You allotted 30 minutes for this entire discussion time, and we are at 30 minutes already. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, I, I imagine looking at the other ones, I think this is perhaps our weightiest topic in this right. section. And, and we so, still can talk about more I, again. It's just since you assigned yeah. me that position, I want to. I very much you appreciate your dil there. your diligence, your diligence in this. Excellence. Um, good. Let's move on then to 8.3 Stockbridge Generator. Uh, for those who weren't here last time, we had um, requested that the administration come back with uh, estimate and some financing possibilities for this. Um, so I'd like to hear that. We'd like to hear their report. So the report is it's been, we've put an RFP out for three bids and they will be back by the end of June. So in August, we will be able to share those bids for you guys to make a selection from as well as funding choices. Mm -hmm. Do we have a ballpark or any ideas what we're, no, okay, okay. We okay. felt like we, yeah, we had the original bid. I, um, we, Lindy and I met with Lyle Smith who's been doing some mm -hmm. consulting for us across the SU. He felt like it was really important for us to go pursue three folks 
to bid so we get a sense of what we're dealing with and just to make certain that the scope of the work makes sense. Um, and so I'll have Lyle come to that August meeting too to talk to you about the three bids and to make a recommendation for you okay. to consider. Um, and do we have a funding strategy at this point or is that okay? My hope is that we can cover it locally um, in the local, the current budget based on the fact that we've been able to find some additional savings based on how we're using recovery funds to cover some intervention. Um, I want to talk that over with Lindy and Tara and Lyle about that, um, about whether or not that makes the most sense. I don't foresee, this isn't a ticket item that we shouldn't be able to figure out the funds for. Um, so we do know we're going to have some savings in personnel next year due to the way that we're able to leverage recovery funds for intervention. So I think that we should be able to then take that money and invest it into our facilities. That's the plan. Great. Great, great. Good. Um, uh, questions on this? Um, Amy, any questions? Justine, any questions? Bill, any questions? No, not at this time. Thank you. Patrick, any questions? No, thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, we'll look forward. I uh, just want to repeat to everybody, um, in case you aren't aware of this, um, uh, there will be no uh, J July board meeting. And the reason for this is that any meeting, any district in this SU has means that the SU has to be on full guard and um, up and doing all their work. And Jamie really feels it's important for the SU office to get a break um, after the work this done. And we've talked about this as a board and as a full board, SU board, and we all agree that it's a very good idea. So just, yeah. just to remind you of that. Um, yeah. Good. All right. Moving on. Uh, storage for both uh, Stockbridge and Rochester schools. Um, I, I asked for this to be put on. Um, it, I, I remember myself and was also reminded that Stockbridge has basically been storing everything in every corner they can. That building, was that not true? Okay. It's one spot and we have a purge plan, which basically means okay. clean spaces out. And if it doesn't get used over the course of a year, then there's conversation. We, we could whittle it down smaller and smaller each year. We are, there's still some stuff over there, but it's not in every corner of the entire high school building okay. it's in a corner. Uh, that, of the room. <laughs> no, uh, the, this is, I mean, this has it's certainly been a discussion item ever since I've been on the board. The idea of some extra space um, uh, uh, that you might have more classroom space or the multi-purpose room might be a fuller if there was some exterior storage. Um, the other part of this is that Rochester with whatever the result of the high school building is, is going to quite likely need some storage space for, if nothing else, the tractor and outdoor equipment. So the idea I was I wanted to present tonight, and I think it's in the early stages of discussion, um, is the idea of um, a new exterior storage space for both places and how we would go about that. And even if that's something our administration wants, and if and if you don't care about or if you don't think that's- No, no, no. I, I think you're on the right track, Ethan. I just think- yep. it still trying to wrap my brain around what exactly is in the Rochester high school building that needs to be stored like the tractor, like that, which, you know, as well as other pieces and part, you know, chairs, tables, things like that. Um, so I agree we'll need something at some point. And we do have a st outdoor storage space at Stockbridge, which has worked pretty well, though my feedback would be don't go with one that's got slanted ceilings because that takes away a lot of space. Um, but so I think we just need to, we're not quite at the point other than the outdoor equipment of like figuring out what needs to be stored from the high school that the elementary accesses. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, I believe so. Um, I yeah. think I think Ethan, as Lindy said, we have to do a we have to do a purge of the high school too. And and when I mean when I say purge, I mean two things. We have to identify the things that can simply just be thrown away, and then we have to identify those 
uh, good serviceable pieces, particularly furniture that are uh, meant for a high school population, not for elementary size kids, because there's no use storing that type of equipment because we won't be using it. So um, I think right now, though, I, I certainly some storage space is going to be necessary. I'd be hard pressed to tell you how much storage space we're going to need until we do more cleaning out of stuff. Okay, I I want to bring it bring it up, and and, and I'm I, I certainly I'm I'm willing to accept your yes, Amy, go ahead. Oh, I I do understand what you're saying. Um, I do know that there is urgency in us um, changing the uh, ownership of this building. And so that does kind of create ur urgency to have a plan in place for where we are going to store this important um, assets that are worth a lot of money. We don't want our tractor and all of and all the equipment that we have to to get ruined because of this, uh, you know. So it's kind of a catch-22. I don't know if we it can um, talk to if the town, you know, does end up um, going forward with taking the building, can we have a conversation with them about renting that space back uh, for the tractor where it currently is? Um, that could, rather than us spend extra money building something, it, you know, that might be a way to go. Uh, but I am concerned that we are not, that we do need to think about this soon um, with, try, as we're trying to move this sale uh, as fast as we are. You know, it's, it, so. Well, and the, and the other part to what Amy uh, is mentioning is we have a dead we have a deadline we're approaching, and that is the September fifteenth mothballing um, that we have uh, currently set, and I just think we need to be aware of um, of of moving forward. Um, along with that, uh, is there anything in the high school that is usable educational material for either the stock for both Rochester and Stockbridge campuses? Um, uh, I think I, I had the feeling that the addition of Sean Lenahan might be useful because he obviously, having taught in that building, knows the building and knows what's there and knows what the upper grades and will be teaching the upper grades um, and certainly could work in um, with his cohort at Stockbridge to see if there's useful material in there. But I, I, I want to emphasize what Amy is saying is that we, we have a deadline approaching and, um, and we need to make sure this stays a priority. Well, um, no, I completely agree with you. Trust me, it's. I was over there today, getting rid of, you know. No, I, I, I know you've been there. And no, I, I, I just, I guess what a, I, the first steps, I really need clear approval from the board that it's okay to move forward with cleaning this out and getting it sorted. You know, what is for elementary space, and then once we've gone through and done that, then we can definitely figure out storage a little bit quicker, but. I have felt a little like, okay, we let this one group come in and look at textbooks and books to see if we could purchase. But now we're at the point where I need like the go ahead to do the purge, so to speak, and contact great, you know, like the historical society to come in and look at trophies and score books and things like that. So we can move forward with this process. And I just want to make sure I'm not, I don't, I don't want to be the one I don't want to move forward and assume that it's okay to just move forward. I would like some clear direction that it's okay to move forward with this process. We have started purging the elementary as well to figure out what storage space is like in the building. Cause sometimes people just don't need everything in their room the whole time they're teaching, but they need access to it at a different point in time. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Uh, no, I, I guess as to what Lindy's saying, I, one of my questions is, is, I mean, is it almost like the doors were just shut on the high school and every classroom still has, you know, paper, pencils, pens, whatever uh, in stock? And then I guess with that, do we try to, you know, organize something where we can get some volunteers together to kind of help you? Because, it's, I mean, that's a lot of work mm -hmm. for, say, one or two people but if you you know if, if we had a group of people that had the direction of of say lindy um and we really try to you know whether we get a dumpster and just start shuffling things that need to go in the garbage in the garbage and then consolidating what is say at that time possible 
to be reused or utilized in a way? Do we try and consolidate it into one room and then from there discuss what we need for storage at that point or, or maintaining a space in the high school to, to keep it for the time being? Good, good thinking. Yeah, I think it's, I, I think, but I hear you, I hear you, Lindy. I think you're asking for some action tonight. Um, and I feel ready to instruct you to, um, to do the purge, to do, well, I mean, I think purge is a different, I don't think we should use that word. I think right. there's um, probably a better up, word for it. Yeah. Um, a sort of uh, uh, a final dispersal. Uh, how about dispersal as opposed, because that sort of sucks about getting stuff to other places. And I think um, I, I'd be ready to give you that permission to move forward. I think the one issue for me would be whether we want, um, you know, we'll, being Rochester or mothballing are the two options really on the table. If we will talk about in our next article, um, agenda item, uh, you know, the real estate sale seems to be not realistic uh, at, at this point. What do we hold? I think we need to know what we want to hold on to that Rochester may want and hold on to the last minute, you know, to see if something happens in Rochester. Um, I think so anyway, I, permission I, right now, Ethan, would be the high school, high school educational related items. And what I mean by that is like, uh, there is a classroom library worth of Grapes of Wrath and any other book we probably all read in English um, class, mm -hmm. so like exploring options to be able to work those and, and get those out and shared and move forward. I would, I want to clarify, I, I will not throw away history. That's like the historian history teacher in me. I would, there's a greater population that understands all that. And then there's this stuff like, can like school supplies that can definitely be reused again, that we've been finding as we've been organizing. And then there's the stuff that is really, truly, high school or just a bunch of extra tables and that's a different conversation but it's kind of in phases and there's some really clear phases that can be done quicker than others but i just kind of need the yeah i think why don't then ask ask for what phase you you, you need now okay so... we'll, we'll give you that approval amy what let me just get yeah. to amy just quickly um Yep, I I, uh, I hear what you're saying, Lindy, and I think that is the best approach. I do think that, um, you know, everything in that building was purchased by the town of Rochester. Absolutely. So we definitely don't want to be purging even high school tables and chairs that could potentially be reused for a senior care center or a, or a classroom for this next group who might be coming in teaching an adult education class in some in some aspects. So I guess I just want us to be cautious that we're not throwing that that type of stuff isn't just getting thrown out. Um, I do think a phased approach does make a lot of sense. Um, and like you said, that the history will will be preserved. That is important. Um, you know, we so. There's two there's two two types of things maybe the the board could weigh in on tonight too Lindy would be the we definitely have some musical instruments that are high school level musical instruments our youngsters are probably not going to be elementary youngsters are probably not going to be playing them and then there's some science equipment um, certainly we would want Sean Lenahan to take a look at it but it's primarily high school science equipment so. Um, if if the board could give us their thoughts on that, we could at least start with those two things. Those, both the musical instruments and the science equipment would be more fitted for for a high school, you know, and our high school being the White River, uh, you know, the White River Valley High School, Union High School. So um, if they would have an interest in that equipment, is that something the board would support or would they prefer not to? I, I would propose uh, or entertain a motion that we uh, direct the administration to uh, move to the next level of dispersal of high school contents by removing uh, or asking for interest in the historical items and high school educational um, items. Okay. 
Does that sound appropriate? Yep. Okay, are, good. Are you including the science equipment specifically in the musical instruments in that high school appropriate uh, stuff? Yes. I think high school sort of covers, I think she has a clear idea of what that is. And we'll certainly be working with Mallory, I imagine, to uh, our music teacher um, to identify what's useful to us and what isn't. Um, the only wor the only thing of caution, and Ethan, maybe you could guide me, maybe, and Justine, um, as far as the White River Valley players and, you know, they're intricate with the theater. And I don't know um, w how musical instruments well, and just stuff goes along with them that they are ownership of. Well, I know, um, Lindy, you're you're arranging a meeting that I sort of set up. Uh, Lindy's sitting down and Bonnie, I believe, is, is sitting down with um, uh, members of the White River Valley players to sort of go over where we are, what they have there, what the future is about that. So I, I hopefully, I, I, if Lindy, if you can make a note to address that. If I don't even think we will get into where their space is. There's plenty of other spaces for us to go until that meeting happens. Yeah, I got you. Good. Right, but I just, I mean, is the piano, uh, is the school piano actually uh, half purchased by the players? Because they use it for productions. You know, and is that something you're talking about getting rid of is our school piano. And I don't know if I'd, if that would be the right thing to do. I think I would say, Amy, that we would have Mallory organize what's the high school stuff. And then before we just disperse, I would reach out. We've already started conversations with the players, like Ethan has huh. said. So if music, musical theater is in their repertoire, which is what it mm -hmm. sounds like, then we will make sure to connect with them as well. Okay. The, the other group we connected with, just so the board knows this, is we've connected with um, the Rochester Rec Department and, and Quintown, because both of them had equipment that they had purchased, stored either in the high school or the elementary school locker room. So uh, we made sure that they have their equipment um, as we're trying to whittle this down here. Good. Um, again, I'll get back. Um, do we feel? Do we feel with those? Caveats, do you feel ready to move this direction? Yes. Okay. Uh, can somebody make that motion, uh, making sure we use the word dispersal and not purge? Yeah. I'll just, I'm going to quickly add to the board. What, what I would suggest we do is once we figure out who has what and we're getting ready to dispersive um, items, that we also provide an opportunity for community members to come take what they'd like. Um, and I've had good luck with that in the past um, in my school in, round, in regards to dispersing tech equipment. Um, allowing folks to have drop-ins to pick stuff up that they may find useful. So I think that that should be part of our plan of action. Yeah, yeah. Like is, it. is there also, I mean, is any of it worth trying to sell or take donation for where like you know i mean obviously there's an issue with storage is there any way some of it could be uh uh sold to bring oh, yeah. in funds to, to support storage as far as like say, table chairs and stuff i mean there's going to be uh, I have so to many chairs and tables and stuff right back yep got you amy I have two goats that just ran across my lawn, so I'm I'm very no sorry. I will no be right. Back. <laughs> we'll catch you later. I, I I would like to have this conversation, this that part with the the community. I think that the the town and envision should really be part of that group it, with with what they're yeah they're trying yeah. to envision because they're trying to do something, and I don't want us to 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 get rid of something on the right hand that they were thinking. So okay, sorry. Well, maybe we're not there then. Um, I mean, it's just there's so many stakeholders in this. Um, it's it's a hard. I, I I feel personally that I think we can go ahead with the high the educational parts. I I think you get the message, Lindy. Um, that's I'm gonna and I I would personally and I I would hope you guys understand that if there was a question, I wouldn't do anything with it. Yeah, I just we have kind of been in this holding pattern, and we. I mean, other than no, and we need to, obviously, and kind of need that. We also can't, you know, to some extent, we can't wait for 
all these different party holders because um, we as the school board have a responsibility to take care of this building for our constituency. And um, that ultimately has to be the top priority for us. Okay. Um, that, that they put their interest out and they tell us what they want. Um, we communicate with them that this is happening. I think that should be part of this. But um, it really can't be up to us to divvy out in the best way. We need to get this done. Sorry, Justine. Well, I was just suggesting that maybe we could have another <laughs> special meeting where it was after it was decided where things would go, if we could then approve it before it goes or something like that. So we could give the go ahead of the first steps of just, you know, the next pl the plan for dispersal of the high school appropriate materials. But if we got had a special meeting where we could vote on it, you know. I don't know. I just wonder if community members like Amy brought up that things were purchased. They might be, you know, concerned about what we're doing with it. I don't know. Yeah, but but we also have, you know, there's been a lot of time that building's been closed for a long time. Um, I sort of like the rule in my house. If something sits in the same place for three years, you don't need it anymore to some extent. Um, I, I, I understand this is all new for everybody, but we can't be second guessing what what Envision is going to want necessarily. That can't be that can't be our job. Our job is to itemize and to move on. It really is. I, I feel very strongly um, yeah, I have a with, question. with communication. But, um, you know, I don't think we can hold this back. We're, we're, we've only got three months to we're supposed to be mothballing this building. And that's a lot of work in three months. Patrick? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think it would just be, um, I, I would like to see another meeting where we could at least know what was decided. What do you mean decided? Like what like, the inventory Okay, is? we've decided that we're going to give the Grapes of Wrath to Ethan to Spice Studio for his bookshelf. We're going to get, donate the old musical instruments to Bethel School, you know. What are we, you know, what we're going to do with all that stuff? The old chalkboard erasers that are piled up in the, you know, there's a million things, but I don't know. It, that's part of the communication, in my opinion. It's not just, you know, oh, now the school's empty. We're going to sell it. There was no, stuff. no, no, no. So there's a, there's, a, there's a great inch between that, and we're giving very clear direction to yep. itemize and disperse. And I trust our administration. I trust our administration to do it wisely, personally. And I say, that's why we're saying we're giving them the, to, the directive to disperse these two areas, you know, high school level uh, material and, and historical data. Um, and I think that's pretty darn clear. Disperse means that they take in these considerations, which I trust they will. And I don't know that we need to mm, a little bit micromanage that. Um, I think we can trust them to do that work. That's my point of view. I, I agree with Patrick. Motion. Patrick, sorry, and then no, I, I I completely agree with you. I think too, like kind of what, from what I'm understanding, what Justine's trying to say too is, we don't want to have a situation where in two months we get a group of community members from Rochester that start to to have faults or problems with how we disperse, and so. You know, in the next month, while say Lindy and whoever is is, you know, trying to figure out who to disperse to and for what, maybe it's not promised. But is it something that they're interested in? If so, we we pass pass a motion at the next at the next uh, school board meeting, as far as where things are get going, and maybe large large ticket items. You know, like. I mean, and like Lindy said, it, obviously there's going to be things that she's not going to feel comfortable with until until we all have a have a say in it. Um, but also in, in that aspect, I mean, we've it sounds like we've given Rochester ample time to you know make a decision on what they want to do with the school, and if they're not really willing to answer that question, then you know we we need to do something. <laughs> We, you know, we can't just sit back and, and watch everything in there rot. <clears throat> well, there is, there, there, there is another way to think about this, and that is that, that mothballing also might include 
the final dispersal of contents mm -hmm. um, or a further dispersal. That That is part of the mothballing process, that mothballing is not just draining pipes and boarding windows, but that it is also part of this. That would give us a little more time that the September 15th wouldn't be, because basically okay. you're saying at the next meeting we vote on it, well, the next meeting, because we don't have a July one is August, that's um, a month, you know, less, less uh, a month and, you know, six weeks before we're supposed to start the mothballing process, which doesn't give our administration very much time to complete this process. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, and there's, a, there's a couple sections of Go the ahead. high school that are pretty, uh, Lindy and I, I think, are not going to have the expertise to deal with. And that's the shop. The shop is filled with welding equipment, plumbing equipment, carpentry tools. Um, I don't know what we would begin to do with that stuff. And then um, just the amount, the volume of high school materials that's in there, sewing machines and the, the automated dolls that talk to you. And there's just, uh, there's just closet after closet filled with high school materials that we need some at some point, some clarification for what is it that you want to have happen with those items. And I would say disperse. Yeah. You know, as I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to disperse. I, I'm going to interject. Okay. Uh, I really think we need to quantify what groups in the community want. Then from there, I think we should publicly announce that things are available to the community who purchased them, and you allow the community to access some of those things. And what the community doesn't access, we then take inventory over and then decide what we want them to do with them. Because, you know, there's a lot of those things too that high schools don't want anymore. Right. And so just because we had them in the high school then doesn't mean that other high schools in the area are gonna want them. And if they do, then they should come the day that we announce those few days that we're going to have those things available to folks and they can go through it and decide what, you know, they may want to access. Um, I really think that that is part of how you disperse some of these materials is that once you figure out what a community groups want and what do they find value in whatever's left that you allow it to be accessed by the community. Um, so are you thinking kind of like a community estate sale? Yeah, that's what I'm picturing Patrick. So maybe have Lindy, you know, we can organize a collection of the things that can be used within within our school, our schools now. And then what's left can be, we can hold an estate sale on a weekend um, for for the community to come to and, and you know, go, they can go through the shop. People like myself can, you know, who are contractors can go through the shop and if there's tools or anything, we can sell them to them. Well, there was an issue. There was an issue with that, um, Bonnie. You mentioned I remember several meetings ago, and that is liability. Yeah, Tara of... knows about Tara and I were talking about product liability because some some individuals have told us that the power equipment in there really doesn't have the appropriate guards and this, that, and the other thing. I mean, um, I think I think that'd be fine as long as maybe we just have them sign a, a waiver. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, let's get to Justine and then Amy. I, I just wanted to say I had I have no doubts in how uh, Lindy and Bonnie would disperse the things. My point was basically to encourage transparency. So it wasn't like, oh, all the stuff is gone. Where did it go? No. That's all I wanted. To, that's the point I was making. Not that I, I think we should definitely go ahead and get rid of all the talking dolls and things. I, I just wanted to make sure <laughs> we're doing it in a transparent manner. And, and you Jamie. You want the talking yeah, doll at your house, Justine? Come on. Oh, oh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> that's, I have enough talking dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Amy. Uh, I think what Jamie said um, is very correct, that we need to engage this community group that is looking for, for potential repurposing of the high school um, because the shop is one of their biggest uh, draws for repurposing and they want all the things as in that shop. Um, and so it, kind of like what Pat had said doesn't make sense to me is to kind of uh, get a handle on what is there or what the uh, community groups want potentially, and then um, 
right get disposition the rest of it that that it, that doesn't have a need um and i think that we're going to know pretty soon the viability of of this community group i mean soon being you know months but um this is not a uh, multi-year process um so i think it's important to engage that that community group so this gets back to Sewing machines that, that they're they're talking about cl having adult classes in there and you know sewing machines might be something that they were hoping that would come along with the purchase okay lindy i just totally fine i'll follow your direction i think that's a great idea but i think there needs to be a deadline like they walk through they make those community groups by this date and then by this date we're pulling it all out so anybody who would like to come see what is left can come see and then we can you know we can't wait four months for someone to come and make a decision about what they want or what they don't want um i just feel like this is a huge thing on folks minds in both communities i'd like to bring some sort of closure to it so we can focus on other things like what sort of storage needs to be created for the elementary school to be able to focus? Well, like, you know what I mean? Like it's all a domino effect and summer gets short really quick when you start to think about that. So we gotta well, like- And I'm, I, I feel like we're handing you a bunch of unfunded mandates to some extent because you know, you've got a, you've got a whole, you've got staffs to retrain and things like that, which is your priority work. Um, inventorying really is not um, um, and so in some ways, I think, uh, I almost feel like the board should take this on and we should all show up down there and, and start working through a room and inventory and, and come up with an inventory. Cause if we have an inventory, then that's, that's a lot easier to put out there to people what they want. Um, but I really don't think, well, I don't think we should be asking our, our administration to be sitting there going through closets, pulling through bags of paper and stuff. I, I, I just think that's a waste of their time and our money. Um, um, so if we want volunteers to do this or something like that, I think, I really think it's, if it's, if Envision wants to run this, um, that's great. But I, I, I really, I'm, I'm now feeling like this is not something I want Lindy to be doing, spending a lot of her time doing or Bonnie. No, no, I agree. I, I think that you're right that, I mean, I, I kind of assume that we would help volunteer through this, but I do think a little bit of direction from from Lindy and her staff would be ideal. Well, we could, I mean, you know, we could all take a room and yeah. you know, yeah. two of us, two of us could inventory a room in probably a couple of hours, I would imagine, and give you a pretty good idea of what's in that room and that you do that with all the different rooms. Does that sound reasonable, Lindy, that that's something that could happen? Or do you think it's gonna take days to go inventory each room? Um, <laughs> so I think it's twofold. There's still filing cabinets with stuff with kids' names on it. So like that's got to be hoed out as well, not the filing cabinet, but the stuff that that's a process in and of itself because of whether uh, it's we have policy on that we need to follow. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so we're trying to work our way through that. I mean, it depends how detailed you want this inventory to be. Do you want to start with the Rochester envision rochester group and just let them do a walkthrough and talk about what they're looking what types of things they're looking for so we can pull those out are there other community groups this, that you're thinking of let me like, let me go this first then what i think what we direct you to and what i think i think you should be spending your time on is specifically school related issues that you know the policy of and you can deal with when it comes to sewing machines and baby dolls and stuff like that, I think that's something that any community group can uh, can be, can can deal with. Um, but obviously, we can't be looking through those files. Right. You know, that needs to be administration only. Right. So that's exactly. something we can give you instruction. Nobody's going to want that. Nobody's going to want that in the community. Nobody has a right to it in the community. So that's the kind of thing you should absolutely be doing, I believe. Um, so we need to give you that direction. Um, uh, it sounds like where this board is not ready to um, approve um, uh, a further dispersal. We're just not there yet. So I, I but I do believe we can give you direction as to um, removing, I think we can give you direction tonight as to removing 
educational um, uh, files and f folders? Is that what, what, what's the term you want? I don't think you even have to give us direction for that because it's a policy okay. that we already follow. So I think right. you're good on that. Um, I think about, you have about, to decide other next steps about the other then, materials then, that are in there. How about this? You make it, 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 that we give you a motion tonight to allow you to make these spaces safe for outsiders to come into. Okay. Does that do make that. sense? Because then that's really about the educational. It's also about, you know, I don't know, safety issues or stuff like that. Um, if there's anything like that. And then then we can start because uh, I really don't think you should be doing this. You know, you should be doing the the, the, the baby dolls. <laughs> I'm going to okay. bring I'm going to give one of those to Lindy so she can demonstrate it to you next time. <laughs> oh, I remember them. I remember them carrying around these things. They're awful. They're wet. I passed that perfect. class in high school. I'm good. I don't have to Same do it. Uh, yeah. And, and along with that, I would like to encourage Lindy to uh, bring stuff to the elementary school or identify and, and set aside stuff that could be used for educational purposes for <laughs> elementary stu students. Because I don't see why our sixth graders can't be using microscopes that we have in the high school. I mean, there's no reason why we, sh we shouldn't be able to offer some maybe, you know, more middle, lower high school stuff too, because we have it. Why not use it? Absolutely. Okay. We can do so that. So if, if we're going to have, um, so can we direct that? Can we make a motion to direct the uh, administration to remove? I don't think we need a motion, do we? It, we it? Just... Oh, if it's policy? All right. Okay, then right. you know I'm that's, your next, that's your next thing. And can I just okay. add, I, I do believe there's a lot of stuff that's just trash. Can right. you please, you know, I think we can trust that Lindy and the maintenance staff knows what's trash and what isn't, and that we can get a dumpster and throw out the trash because there there is stuff in there that's just trash. And I think it'll I, make jobs easier when you go to start inventorying. I'm not talking about anything that's of value. Do we want to set a date where the board can help remove some of the trash and help organize? Yes, I think we do. I think I think um, you know we we get otherwise we're we're asking our administration to take on all this while we sit back and I don't that's not what yeah we're no. um, you know so, one way you could handle this if the whole board's going to be there is warn it as your board retreat and then just spend the time I like that idea um, Justine, I know you're the most time sensitive person um, in terms of the work you're going into. Um, how do you feel about, I imagine this would be a, a Saturday or a Sunday for a number of hours. Um, um, it, it depends on when. Are we talking in like June or July? I think it needs to be June. June would asking. be better for me than July. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's... I would prefer during the week because that is when my child would be at camp. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't have any week time off right now. Yeah. Um, Why don't we do two different days, one weekday and one weekend day, and as long as everybody picks, picks one of them. Um, are we asking our administration to be there, or are we just going to go in and inventory a room? Can I at least get you started in the direction, like where to start? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you, Lindy. Lindy I'd I like had... to be there to at least get you guys like started in the right direction. Like, hey, we've got all of this ready for you. Can you come look at all of this? Great. So maybe we should actually wait for Lindy to get to that place. I like deadlines. Let's pick a date. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to pick a date. Sorry, it'll help because then I can get everybody on board. So uh, there are, there is the 12th, as far as Saturdays, there's the 12th, 19th and 26th. As far as Sundays, there's the 6th, 13th and 20th and 27th. Um, and then a midweek, you know, I, I, I can make my 
you know, I could do something with you, Amy, on a, on a, on a weekday. Uh, Bill, can you do a weekday? Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you, Ray. Uh, 619 is. How, how soon, Lindy, do you think this would be 619 TSA graduation? Thank you. Um, how soon, Lindy, do you think these bill rooms will be garbage free and um, sensitive document free? Can we aim for the weekend of the 19th and then the beginning of that next week? I think we could get a lot done by then. Okay. So well, we the can set. hold trash though too. I mean, and we, I, I, I mean, we, a lot right. of, I can I a lot of cabinet we shouldn't go into. I mean, if we just know that this is not an area to deal with, but I like your dating. I, the, the, the week of the 21st would be very nice for me. Um, so Saturday the 19th, who can make Saturday the 19th? I can. Justine, could you make Saturday the 19th? Um, it may be after graduation, Hap, my niece Hap graduates on the 19th. Ah, got you. Uh, that's right. We just saw TSA graduation. Should we move it to the Sunday? I would like that. Sunday afternoon. Amy, could you do Sunday afternoon? Uh, that is Father's Day weekend. And also I have a baby shower that day. So I'm sorry <laughs> that's not going to work. I could do the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of the next week, no. though. Well, uh, then, if 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 you can't, let's let's see how many. Uh, Patrick, what's your schedule for Saturdays and Sundays? Patrick, are you there? Uh, my, I suggest an idea, Ethan. Yeah, I could put out a doodle poll tomorrow. Uh, and you, cause you can do that as a board to decide your meeting dates and we could see when you could get the most people. So you don't continue to take time tonight, trying to figure this out. Yep. I That's agree. Okay. Let's do that. Great. Thank you. Um, the one advantage here is that I think we've kind of taken care of 8.5, um, to some extent. Um, so I just want to be clear, Lindy, you don't need, you, as far as sensitive documents, you're on top of that. Um, please put out to us anytime you do need help hauling trash um, out of the building. And I think some of us might be available on a day um, and could just do it, you know? So um, let's let's put our hands into this to make this happen. Um, I, uh, I had one further comment on 8.5 as far as the uh, uh, sale of the Hutch High School building. I did hear back from one of my real estate agents, basically what I expected, which was that uh, this was a very difficult property to sell. It was going to take more time and money than it was worth to them to invest. And so they're very busy and it was not a practical position to take up. I think that's probably what we'd hear from other people, but that was certainly what I heard from this one. So um, I, 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 you know, I don't know. I guess we can keep. I guess we need to decide if we're going to keep pursuing a private sale. Um, uh, Ethan, I'll just add that David David reached out too, just to see if he could help generate any more interest. And on top of what you just said, um, the indication that I know he got from a couple agents is that. The timing is just not great based on the real estate market right now. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that the effort right now in Vermont to pursue this building when real estate's just popping still, yeah. um, that it doesn't seem worth their effort at the moment. Yep. So I guess, um, you know, what's the board's will on this? Do we want to keep banging the drum and trying to find a private sale? Or are we down to our you know, basically our two last options, which are is mothballing, closing the building, um, uh, and potentially transferring it to Rochester town. I think that's the reality of where we are. I don't want to completely lock the door on a private sale, but I don't think we should be spending effort and money pursuing that at this point. Um, maybe at, 
down the road if if as the, if this road keeps getting long then maybe we need to revisit this um later is my opinion justine i think we've done our due diligence in looking for uh realtors to take it on so i think waiting and and working on cleaning it out and putting our energy toward that i think is more important than um just knocking on realtor stores right now the real estate market is has picked up again and it's summertime so it's it's not gonna slow up for for a while in my opinion so patrick patrick are you still on do you know about star six to unmute ethan this is ray it was can you hear me now yeah oh yeah yes uh, uh yeah no i i uh i i agree that um i think it's gonna make more sense to to move forward with inventory and figuring out what's going on inside the school um because that needs to happen before we make a sale anyway and if we can't find a realtor right now then i think we put our focus on that good and bill yeah i agree with uh, justine's and and patrick's um thrust on this i think they're right uh, correct i support that good all right i think that's our clear direction um uh as far i just wanted to um uh say i i, I sent an email to board members of the select board um asking if there was any intention to hold a vote anytime soon um with rochester or what their intent was um, I, I hope to hear back from them with with some information about that, because I think that would obviously um, uh, give us some confidence in that in that particular future. Um, but we'll see. Obviously, they're waiting for their grant, um, which I, uh, Amy told me June 10th. They will hear whether they got the um, evaluation grant. Um, and then, of course, that process will start at that point if they do get it. Um, any other comments about the sale of Rochester High School building? No. Uh, Patrick, I can't see you. You got anything on that? No, I'm all set. Bill? No, I don't have anything. Good. Okay, thank you. Moving on, uh, 8.6 tax anticipation note. Okay, so we will continue to use Community National Bank another year for our tax anticipation notes. The interest rate on borrowing is 1.25% and the interest rate on the investment is a 1.35%. So I just need you all to make a motion, please, if you are in agreement to accept the Fiscal year 2022 tax anticipation note from Community National Bank. And then I will send you all the loan docs. I need a majority of the board to sign. Also the board clerk, not the clerk of the board, but the board clerk. And then um, the treasurer needs to sign all the loan documents prior to July 1st. Any questions on the tax anticipation note? No. No. Oh, Bill, go ahead. I'm fine. Okay, good. Thank you. I make a motion to accept the ta tax anticipation note for the fiscal year 2022. 2022, um, as stated uh, from Community National Bank, as stated by Tara. I second. Second by Bill. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So I have a question. We do oh. not have a clerk of the board. So who's going to sign that? You appointed a clerk of the clerk when you did your board org. It's your actual clerk, not the clerk of not the, the board. Not the Like chair, vice chair, clerk. Who's your right. clerk? I think it's Pat. Is that, that yeah. me? So that Pat. Pat has a special place that he has to sign on the loan docs. <laughs> okay. Good. Great. How will that be coming around to us, Tara? Is that like 
dropped off. It's the school. majority of you can sign in electronically. I can do it that way. I can send it out via email. But if you need to sign in person, if you want to identify a common place, what I can do is I can get it printed or I can send it to one person to print. And then I'll need your signatures. And then we'll need to get it, like I said, to Rebecca, the treasurer, for her to sign in her sections. Um, so what works I, for, I for you do, all? I can do eDoc. I can do an electronic. So Pat and Ethan can sign electronically? Yes. So can yeah. I. I can too. And Justine can. How about you, Amy? Are you good to sign electronically? Does that mean print it out, sign it, scan it back in, and send it back to you? <laughs> that works. Because I can do that. Okay, so what I can do then is I can send it to one person. They can sign it when the ones that can do it electronically. So Pat, Ethan, and Justine, if they can sign electronically, then it can go to you for printing and signing. And then if you don't mind, when you go to sign, because you're still signing AP warrants, right? Then yeah. you can bring it to Rebecca and have her signature, and then it just needs to get back to me. Okay, we can do that. Perfect. Thank you all. Great. Thank you very much, Tara. All right, so we've taken our nine action, action possible items. We're on to 10 new hires and resignations. Actually, you had some additions, yeah. Go we ahead, added Wendy. Suzuki and vacant uh, board position to the discussion. Oh, item. sorry, sorry, sorry. I did not write those down, sorry. Uh, what's us, oh gosh, okay. Uh, so Suzuki, um, for those, uh, I don't know, Pat or Bill, if you know about this, but for uh, several years, uh, of, of the past several years, the Rochester School has been rented out uh, in the summer months, one, one week in the summer, to a, um, a rather large uh, uh, school education program, a Suzuki, Suzuki music program. And they take over, uh, they used to take over all the buildings of the high school and the elementary school and many of private homes that have uh, pianos in them as well. Uh, they would do their recitals in the um, auditorium. Um, it was a, a pretty good, it's, it's a, a, a moneymaker for the town um, in terms of uh, rentals and um, people, you know, uh, in, the, in the town. Yes, there. Um, the question is they would like to use uh, parts of the high school. Um, and um, Lindy's shaking her head on that. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's just something we need to, I think that it's, it's appropriate for the board as a whole to talk about because it is board um, property and we need to make a decision about that. So Lindy, go ahead. Well, so I just wanna be clear when they first approached about this year, it was under the understanding that things are different. Like that building, the high school building's not being used we didn't know what COVID guidelines were going to be. So the original request was for the elementary school building and all the outdoor structure slash tent spaces. And now there's been pushback to access more of the high school. And I've tried to explain that it's not just a matter of like sending someone in to clean those extra spaces. Like it's, it's a safety concern. It hasn't been used for over a year and a half now. Like it, Really, I would not recommend, I understand how important it is, but I'm just really concerned about the liability of opening up some of those spaces um, for their use for that week. Ethan, the other issue we have too is some of the, some of the, some of the ancillary services you need if you're gonna have folks in there. You know, Some of the water has been shut off to some of the toilets. Um, there were little leaks around some of the faucets, not major ones, but certainly not ones we were going to call a plumber in knowing we were probably going to be shuttering the building. So we just don't have the, the building just doesn't offer the support you need to have to have people in there. We've got ceiling tiles down where we've been monitoring some issues and, um, I have a question. Yep. No, it, no, it sounded like, um, the, the main focus for the high school was the use of the auditorium for, for this. Is that correct? Or? And music room. In the music room. I'm just wondering, I mean, as far as, is there a possibility to have the auditorium available to them and bathrooms and water would have to be used only at the elementary? 
I don't know that they're going to walk from there over to the elementary school to use, I mean, unless we lock yeah. the bathrooms, I guess, but one of the sets yeah. of bathrooms that we'd have to have a plumber come in and work on is the one that's right outside the auditorium, the ones where they typically use those bathrooms when they're using the auditorium. It sounded like though, and Lindy, if I'm wrong, correct me, it sounded like uh, she might have been looking for more than the auditorium. Am I right on that or wrong on that? Or it was the auditorium, the music room, and the um, fax the room, room, right? The home ec room. Yeah, yeah. So the rooms that were the last occupied by us right. when we were in there. Right. Um, and so there is a bathroom off of that used to be included in the home ec room. It's a single bathroom. Yeah, and that one's fine, Amy. That one's in fine shape. So that one's fine. So the 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 two um stall bathrooms you're saying are both shut off those are the ones that partially shut off those are the ones we need to get a plumber in to make to do something it, it's a sink or it's a toilet or is it the entire bathroom that's i believe it's two of the toilets in one of the sinks but i i would have to check that to be certain okay and then um in the music room those bathrooms are shut off as well no those bathrooms were those bathrooms are fine okay i mean they haven't been used in a couple of years so that would be the other thing we'd have to flush them and see what we have here. Well, but as far as I know, those would be fine. It's a safety issue too, that we have to give some thought to. Uh, I personally, um, oh, go, go ahead, Justine. I, I just uh, was wondering what the safety issue was. Can we talk about that but other than the bathrooms? Um, yes, we have some ceiling tiles down. We have some, wires that are up sort of away from you know mm -hmm. people who aren't looking to climb around on things and stuff like that and we could, we could close that up i guess but i was a little concerned about youngsters being in there wondering what kind of you know mischief they might get into i i, I personally feel like this is not the year to um be sick and guessing how to use the auditorium um, we've made our position pretty clear about the high school building and what we're trying to accomplish with it. I think if it was initially offered as the elementary building, I mean, you know, maybe we, if they want to pay to move a piano from one place to another and retune it, I can understand that. But uh, I don't know. I just, I just feel like after all we just went through about inventory and the mess we want to make in the next few weeks to get this stuff cleared out, that's the exact opposite of what we're trying to do to make this space usable for um, for a, a one people coming in for one week. Um, that's my opinion. That it's not the year to ap approve this. That we should stick with what was offered the elementary and the outside buildings, outside structures. I agree with you. Yeah, I think egress is something just to consider too, Ethan. And the more you guys were talking as I'm listening. You know, I just worry about egress around fire safety. And if we got ceiling tiles down and I do in wire, like that's just. I, I support it. Believe me, I support Suzuki. I support what they're doing, but I think it was very clear to them. This is a different year. I think it's already, I, I, I just don't, you know, what we're just talked about. I really feel like we're going in a different direction right now. I hear what you're saying. Um, I just want everybody to understand that the little kids are not just running around. Part of Suzuki is a parent is required to be at every lesson, at every function with a kid. So, it, you know, just it was sounding a little scary with just, you know, random kids running around and climbing things. Um, and this is not that would definitely would not happen because there is, it's a one-to-one. -one. Every child is required to have a parent uh, with them at all lessons and all performances. All right. Well, um, I, I, I brought this up because I wanted us to talk, talk about it. I think we should, you know, I, I don't know if we need to move on this because it's basically already been presided, but do we want to open up, do we want to make the effort to open up parts of the high school to the Suzuki for one week. I, I think I have be a question. Patrick. Uh, um, now, 
if the initial agreement was just the elementary school that this year, I mean, is there a chance that they're going to want to back out and find another um, venue? And if they do, does that mean potentially losing them in future years when you say that this is usually a really good moneymaker for Rochester? Uh, I mean, I, I can't speak to that. All I can speak mm -hmm. to is our situation, knowing our school and our buildings. Um, yeah. I certainly don't want to jeopardize it. I would think there was too short a time for them to find a whole new venue. Um, uh, it's, I just don't think they quite understand the picture. The mm -hmm. only thing I could add to that, Patrick, is when I talked to, to Pam, she's the director of the Institute. I, it must have been in February, January, February. Um, I had shared with her um, the situation around the high school and that the board was looking to sell the high school. And she had asked, um, you know, if I had any idea who might be purchasing it or if it would go to the town. And I told her I, I certainly did not know that. But depending on what happened to the high school, um, you know, and who the owner was, she might very well have to look for another location if she wanted the institute to be the size that it had been. Um, if she, if, you know, the owner didn't allow access to the high school. So, um, I think that's in the back of her mind that that's a possibility because they okay. literally, they literally used, it's safe to say they literally used every inch of both buildings. It was a very, very well attended Institute. Um, and there were few spaces in that building that weren't used. What Now what's the time frame for this, uh, in relation to us? as a board meeting there and, and starting to clear things out? Is it before or after? Uh, let me just check that. After it's my time. It's after. Mm -hmm. Now, is, I mean, <laughs> can it be kind of left open, like as a, as, a, as a discussion and see where we're at after we spend a day there? and whether it's realistic or not. Well, the only thing I could see is, I guess I assumed that the music room was still, that, that Mallory was still storing uh, instruments there and probably was using the bathroom every once in a while over there. So it seemed reasonable to me that that room was, was more, um, in more of a possibility than, than other locations in, in the um, high school. I think the other thing about the music room, Amy, that to, to Jamie's point, um, is that it has its own exit. It has its own outside exit. So there's no need to, you know, we could, we could deal with the egress issues just around that, just around the music room. It's more difficult when you start talking about the home ec room in the auditorium. Well, maybe, maybe we, I mean, could we offer just the music room to them then and say that no, we're, we're just really can't do anything else, but the music room is, is a music room. It, and that's what this Institute is about is music. And, um, you know, maybe they, they say no, uh, or, uh, you know, they're looking for as much space as possible. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's sort of our decision. You know, we, we, we've made a clear decision already as a board um, what are you know where we're headed with this building is to not be responsible for it. Um, I I is it I think, possible for them to use the Chandler at all? It's it's too far away. It, it, Wrong it town. Is, everybody walks around the town. Gotcha. Um, so I, I mean you know I. I that's my my view is uh, I don't think I don't think we have the time for this. I'm, but I'm if you want to put this off um, and see where we are, you know, two weeks before. But I, I, I don't know if they're going to be that's going to change for them because they obviously have to decide numbers of staff to bring in. I mean, I, I don't know. They may not care. They may well, need I, an answer right now. I think at, at this point, if um, they're scrambling to find locations in Rochester to be able to hold these classes, these that would be the. The, the music, the whatever's the music room and the, the, the three that they would like to do in our high school, they're, they're looking for other venues in Rochester that um, they can use. And, you know, they're already using most of them. So, um, you know. 
Okay, well, you know, that's what why we were talking about it, just to get mm -hmm. it out there and let us all know what's happening. Amy, do you know if they're using, uh, like, the Pierce Hall and the Park House? They're probably not able to go into the Park House this year, right? They well, usually I would say they're it. probably not able to go into I'm Sorry, I said Chandler earlier. I meant Pierce Hall. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm sorry, no, I, I, I do not know... Um, I do not know all the venues that they are using. I was just wondering if they were at a shortage because of COVID and that's why they're being persistent about the high school building. Um, but in my experience, it is a tremendous economic boom for the town of Rochester every year, having worked in all of, all of the establishments in the center of Rochester that serve food. It's incredible income for the town and it probably will be uh, make a huge difference um, with regards to COVID. So well, then, whatever we can do to be flexible, I would I would support the Suzuki Institute because they've been coming for a very long time. Okay. Lindy, and then let's make a decision. I just want to remind you though that we haven't allocated any funds to keep the electricity on in that building or any of that because it comes on July 1. So we reset at the fiscal year. So that becomes another piece of the puzzle but we're obviously going to have to pay something to till september 15th uh what do we want what's our will here we need to make i think we've talked uh i believe we've talked enough what do we want um just board here can we make can we make the music room available to them and then when we are there two weeks before we at least try to get through any issues that may need to be addressed in order to make that safe and um and, and usable for them uh, i i just i don't I don't want to put this on our administration. Mm -hmm. right? That's that's my. Then I trust your your opinion, and I I'll, I'll stand with that. That's fine. I I, I hear the arguments. I, I believe me, the economic. I would hate for them to go somewhere else. I uh, just. Um, uh, you know, if, if, if we had a whole volunteer committee that was here supporting Suzuki that could get in there and help us with this, I just, there's so many unknowns. There's just so many unknowns for us right now. So I, I, that's my opinion. And I, I really think we should take some sort of vote on this because I don't think just um, my opinion, you know, swaying. Um, and I think the question is, do we, do we hold out to, and I, what is our question here? Our question is, do we open the building to Suzuki or not? Because I don't think they want an if or when, maybe. They need a yes or no. And I think we need to give them a yes or no. Then I think we say no as of right now. And, you know, if, if for some miraculous reason we can offer them the, the, the music room, we, you know, it'll be a bonus. <laughs> Justine? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with, with Pat. Um, I guess we have to say no if there's no other way to get it, in, in, you know, up to par. Um, yeah. I, I'm not super happy about it, but I agree with Pat. Amy? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, sure. Bill? Yeah, I support the staff's uh, approach to this, and in this case, it would be no. Okay. I think that's clear um, that we let them know that it is, it is not an option um, and that it's tough. It's a tough call. Uh, nobody's called me about Spice mm. Studio, by the way. So I'll, I'll approach them about that. That's another space with a piano. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we'll see what we can do. But I think it's good. The park okay. house has piano. Yep. <laughs> probably not going to want a bunch of kids in there, right? I know. I know. 
Um, good. Uh, moving hey, on. Hey, nine o'clock. Moving on. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, eight, eight, eight was um, Rochester board member. I, I, I don't think there's a lot to say here. Basically, we're we're looking for somebody. I may have a lead um, that I'm pursuing, um, but uh, I think anybody who knows somebody in Rochester who might be interested, please get the word out. Have them talk to me or Jamie. Um, um, I. I think there's some people, I don't know that we, you know, that the Herald is good, but I don't know that it necessarily got the word out there. So um, um, any, any, any way we can get the word out um, to get a good qualified board member from Rochester would be appreciated. Um, those of you who are listening, who live in Rochester, if you can think of people, um, uh, please send names. I'd be happy to make calls myself. And I think that's all we have to say on that. Unless somebody else has a comment. Nope. Good. Now let's move on to new hires and resignations. Yep. So we have um, two resignations this evening. Uh, Mallory, Mallory Fagoras has submitted her resignation. Um, music teacher and outdoor educator for next year. And uh, Megan Donahue, our long-term sub for sixth mm -hmm. grade, and she also taught some four or five literacy, um, submitted her resignation. She will not be finishing out the school year. We will place Joni Wisdall, our interventionist and certified classroom teacher in the classroom space to finish out the year with those kids um, who is more okay. than qualified. And we have some new hires. Um, Ron Hall has been ex has interviewed and has accepted the um, like the four, five, six literacy humanities position for next year in Rochester Elementary. So he'll be paired up with Sean Lanahan uh, wow. for next Great. year, Amen. which will be great. And um, Natalie Hillman will be the third grade teacher next year in Rochester. And we have some others we're finishing up the interview process with. So we're Making really good progress. We're good. Good, good, good. Yeah, good work. I know this is a lot to take on at the end of the year. So appreciate all the effort. Good. Um, any questions about um, hires or resignations? Mm -hmm. Can I just up. add that uh, I had a really enjoyable conversation with Ron, uh, just like with Sean Pryor and um, and then with the, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's late. Natalie? Yes, good All job. Right, good. Uh, and Natalie, uh, you got some really good candidates coming aboard. Um, I'm sad to see how that candidate folks go. But, and Natalie's from uh, Norwich University and uh, had a really delightful conversation with her. Um, and I just want to say, I'm, I personally, I accept, and do we, do we need to accept these resignations, I believe, as, as yeah. a motion? Um, I just want to say with regret um, for both of them, I heard very good things about Megan. I know for various reasons, and I'm very sad about Mallory. Um, I personally worked with her um, in, in a couple of different ways and uh, really liked the program she created. And um, I'm sorry, I hope, you know, hope it's a positive step for her, but uh, I, 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 accept, I will accept with regret in both cases. Um, uh, entertain a motion to accept the resignations as um, as directed by our administration. I move to accept the resignation resignations as directed by uh, by our administration. Uh, second, please. I second that. <laughs> um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Good. And can you guys move the two hires too? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, to accept uh, Ron Hall, uh, entertain a motion to accept Ron Hall as a four, five, six in Rochester, and Natalie Hill as a three in Rochester. To make a motion to accept Ron Hall as four, five, six in Rochester, and Natalie Hillman as grade three in Rochester. Second. Second by Justine. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your administration. Good. And we open this up now to public comment. Um, 
please, when you identify yourself, and I'll go down the list, um, please state what town you're from um, and, uh, and let us know if you have a comment. And I'll start with Charity Colton. Do you have a comment for the board? Good evening, um, Charity Colton, Stockbridge. Um, Jamie and Tara are probably already all over this but Patrick made a comment about accepting donations to be put towards storage. I just wanted to raise the awareness that when you accept donations with a specific intent, you are limited to only ever use it for that intent. So you may wanna be careful of how you accept those donations if you want to be able to have a little bit of flexibility. I only know this from learning the hard way. <laughs> So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Charity. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Woolley, comment for the board? <laughs> Got you. Got you, Nancy. I saw that. So no, thank you. Uh, Tim Pratt, comment for the board? Yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, about the Suzuki, that's a little bit disappointing. It doesn't, don't they rent, uh, don't they pay something to use the facility? Yep. $15. So, so, so why can't we use that to fix the little bit of plumbing that is an issue? The southern half of that building is not in bad shape. And you can isolate that southern half from the northern half very easily. My second thing is, uh, I was looking for the bases for the town's field. And I had talked to Jeff Mills, and he thought they were up in the mezzanine. And I went up with Bonnie. Now, I think it's a good idea that you uh, go up and look at that mezzanine. There is some stuff that can be purged is the politically correct way to say it, too, uh, uh, without any discussion. There are filters up there for the air handlers that, you know, that are just piled up. There's stuff up there that's complete junk. And uh, in the past, what's happened is uh, bring the dumpster to the back door and make a shoot down the back stairs and, ju and just toss the stuff. Three people upstairs, toss the stuff down the chute, three people down at the bottom, walk it over to the door and throw it into the dumpster. So you don't have to lug stuff up and down the stairs all the time. So th there's, there is absolutely junk up there. Now, the, the funny thing is, I was looking for those bases in the library, old library room, common room, and uh, then was told that some of the stuff had been put into Mr. Moltz's old room. So, you know, I was walking around that building, uh, looking around for stuff, and really the classrooms are pretty clean. You're not going to be spending a lot of time up there. Your purging is going to be up in the mezzanine. And to use administration to do that would just be so too much cost and to, to even, there's nothing personal up there that needs to be uh uh you know kept confidential so there are tons of uniforms tons of old textbooks that nobody i mean science and math textbooks that are 30 years old Science and math is changing all the time. Throw those down the chute, get rid of them, and then you'll you'll see the microscopes and you'll see the babies and you'll you know you'll <laughs> see the stuff that might be worth saving. And somebody might historically want some of that stuff. Seventy percent of it is completely crap. So, uh, you know, it, it really you guys as a board should just go up there and look at it and then uh, say you know, this stuff just has to go. But as far as the Suzuki, I hope you change, will rethink that because that Southern part of the building, if it only needs a couple of little plumbing issues, and I, I didn't notice that there were that many tiles down. 
you know, somebody can put those tiles back up in two hours. Uh, and that's not e that's not even in the southern part. So, you know, and I'm not big into the theater stuff, but it does generate a lot of new people coming into this valley. That's all I got. Good. Thank you very much, Tim. Ethan, I think I'm going to regret I ever mentioned those babies. I'd like to retract <laughs> that statement. <laughs> oh. No, too late. I think I think there might be an auction for them <laughs> at this point. Uh, Karen Rubin, do you have a comment for the board? Hello and good evening to everyone. Ethan, I do have a couple of things that I want to address. Um, first of all, I, I just want to say that it's pretty big business to run a school district and you guys are doing a great job. You have a lot of stuff that you need to cover. You have a lot of opinions that come your way. I know that I give them to you fairly enough. Um, so I just want to applaud you all because I think you're doing, you know, a great job despite all of the adversity that comes with running the business of a school district. Um, so that being said, I do have a couple of questions. I have a couple of comments. I'm going to fire them at you and um, we can take it from there. The first thing that I want to throw out there is, um, Patrick, you had questioned earlier, and, and in, I just want to say excuse me because I was tuning in while I was at work. I was tuning in while I was in my car on the way home, and then I was tuning in when I got home. So I had a couple of places along the way where I lost connection with you guys. But Patrick, you had asked the question when Lindsay was talking about the academic scoring that she presented earlier this evening, um, as far as how that relates to previous, uh, I'm, I'm gonna speak on Stockbridge's behalf, but Stockbridge's alumni. I will tell you, you guys have heard it from me before, my son's graduate writing class struggled. More than half, probably three quarters of his class struggled. So Lindy, if you can show us that the kids that are in that school right now are getting a better education than my son got, then I'm all for it. And I appreciate that. Um, that is our experience. And um, I don't want to speak on behalf of other families, but I feel confident that I've had enough conversations with other families that you guys are in a positive projectile at this point in time. So um, that I just kind of wanted to make a comment on. Speaking of which, my son is graduating this year. So woohoo, two things. I'm wondering if um, our SUD has any intentions of acknowledging their student alumni either this year or in the future or even moving forward. You know, are you interested in maybe putting something out there publicly congratulating the Rochester and Stockbridge students who are graduating and moving on to whatever the next phase of life has for them. Um, I think it's a pretty important thing and I think that our community will actually gather around seeing the accomplishments of our students and where they're moving on. So I'd like you mm -hmm. as a board to consider finding a platform somewhere this year and moving forward where you can um, just give kudos to those kids' accomplishments. Uh, so that is that. Now on to my next item, and I'm going to throw this out to Bill, which Bill, you can actually um, reply to me via email if you'd like. I know that Stockbridge Central School has, or excuse me, Stockbridge Board of Trustees has scholarships available to these kids. We've gone onto the website, myself and my son, to look at what he needs to do in order to um, capitalize on those scholarships. By the way, Board of Trustees, thank you. From a parent who's trying to figure out how to afford the next four years, I appreciate that. Um, but I wanna make sure that these kids have some kind of follow-up as to what they need to get to the Board of Trustees so that those funds can get appropriately um, put onto their financial aid packets. So Bill, again, if you want to follow up with me privately on email, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, you know, why don't you, why don't you um, email me and, uh, um, and I'll, I'll try to answer your questions. Um, and 
Stockbridge is celebrating the, the seven kids that are graduating from high school this year from Stockbridge through the um, first year of our Stockbridge Graduate Award. And they'll be receiving um, a, a check for their accomplishments. And they'll also be receiving information uh, on uh, the Stockbridge Scholarship uh, that if they wanna move on, in which we encourage them to do so, um, that process, which is going to be a very simple one, but uh, is that going to be mailed to them? Though? Excuse me. Is that going to be mailed to those students? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Well, again, I really appreciate it because there was it was it was touch and go as far as college was concerned, but we're yeah, a go so now. You know, um, but email me. My uh, the town uh, website has my email and. Uh, and we can talk about it further. I don't want to take more time tonight, but uh, more than happy to discuss and answer any and all of your questions. That's fantastic. I appreciate that. Um, you know, when we had the last informational meeting, um, I think I was like maybe the second person to talk. And I asked a lot of questions about the um, high school building. Um, I mm -hmm. feel at that point, I had a pretty good handle on the academics which obviously was a concern to a lot of people. So I just wanna put it out there that these meetings are public to everybody so that you can get the, the information as it's happening live in real cover color. Um, it's not just about the high school building that concerns me, the academics, and I know Lindy and, and Ethan, you and I have both all talked about this, um, but it was a concern and I'm glad to see that you guys are taking that seriously. Now to the distribution piece of this. Um, first of all, community volunteers. I know that you don't want probably too many people involved in that, but I also want to throw out a couple of things to keep in mind. You have high school students that through a requirement of their graduation have to give community service hours. So just keep that in consideration too. You have kids mm -hmm. out there that cannot graduate without a certain amount of community service hours in their, in their prospective high schools. So between them and other community members, you could have a lot of you know, manual labor people to help you with that, Lindy. Um, I also wanna throw this out because I do show up for these meetings and I, you know, I do, ask hard questions and I, you know, I, I kind of, you know, throw things at you guys to, to hold you accountable. I'm more than happy to be one of those community members that shows up to say, let me help push a broom, clean a, clean a room, help you with inventory. So you do have community members out there that are willing to help, I'm sure of it, as well as your alumni who need those credits to graduate. Um, I would, strongly encourage Jamie's consideration that he threw out there that you let the community know what is available and you let the community have an opportunity to either purchase those items with a donation to the school or an organization. Um, but I'd also like to maybe ask you, how do local organizations get on your radar? I'm a lead mentor for our local robotics team. Our local robotics team is a high school team. It's made up of middle and high school students throughout our community. We've had 22 to 25 members on a regular annual basis. Guess what I teach them how to do? I teach them how to sew and I teach them how to sew on a sewing machine that's total crap. <laughs> so, um, you know, just how does a local, how does a local community organization get on your radar to say, hey, we have a need for an item that you might have to distribute from the high school. Um, another uh, one that I wanted to throw out there, just because I did not hear you guys say it, is your after school programs. Your after school programs and your summer programs. I don't care how old you are. I started learning how to sew when I was seven years old. So you do not have to be a high schooler. And I'm just throwing the sewing machine out there because that's one of the areas that our robotics team is definitely lacking in is a solid, good sewing machine. Um, but also consider your after school programs and what they might be able to 
um, utilize from the items that you're distributing. Um, so that were that was my comments. Uh, Lindy, I would like to put Architaz 6933 on your radar when it comes to items coming onto the high school because we are in desperate need. We borrow tools, we borrow machinery, we pull sewing machines out of the trash dumpsters to be able to try to utilize and we service anywhere between, like I said, 22 to 25 kids on an annual basis, and we are only gonna to continue to grow in that organization. So thank you all. Um, Bill, I will follow up with you, and I appreciate that you guys stick to it, and you do the jobs that you do, because this is not an easy one. Thank you very much, Karen. Much appreciated, um, especially the comment about acknowledging students. I think that's something that, having a young student, I. I leaves my radar. So I appreciate it. I think it's really important. Um, do we have, I, I'm not sure if we have another caller on, do you not see anybody else? I don't see anybody else. I, uh, does anybody else see another number? My screen's having trouble, so I don't see anybody else. Okay. I think that's it. Very good, thank you. Um, future agenda items. Well, obviously the high school building is gonna be there. Um, I'm, I think we should have another meeting before the end of June, personally. Um, uh, I just, uh, I, I think we need to get out that this is too much for our administration. I, I, I'm thinking about Suzuki. And if, and if there is a public ground swelling of people who are ready to get in there to Tim Pratt's thing. But I'm also, you know, I already pushed it one way. I should just let it lie because that's probably the best thing to do. Um, no, uh, our next scheduled meeting is not until August. Um, uh, but uh, anybody else have a future agenda item? I know, Bill, you had a whole list of them that you sent me uh, a week ago. Uh, yeah, I'm a one of uh, two newbies and uh, but I only speak for myself and I think it would be helpful at least annually to get together uh, Jamie used the term uh, retreat where we talk about you know why why are we here what do we want to do what are our goals as a board going forward um, how do we make our board meetings uh, as efficient as possible, um, uh, how do we keep the separation between board and policy with administration and carrying out the operations of our schools? Um, so I think that's important to me and better since I have a, and can be part of where we're going, I think I could be more effective uh, as a school board director. Uh, and I was under somewhat of an impression that that may happen this summer. So um, I guess my question is a question or a request that um, uh, Ethan, you uh, and, and Jamie um, consider how we could get together. Now, maybe we don't have to get together, um, but we've got enormous challenges going ahead. And it, it just seems to me that it's helpful to build that team and that chemistry, not only within our faculty and faculty um, and principals and the staff, but the board in and of itself. And I can't say I really know you. Um, and I think getting better understanding where we're coming from and how we can move together forward is, is worthwhile. So that's my, that's my request. Let let me take on the idea of a board retreat because um, I think in some ways that might be a great thing. Well, let, let me, let me, let me, I wrote that down. Let me take that on that. It might be good. And also just for us that maybe we don't, you know, bring in our administration or staff, we let them take a break and we just sit down and, and hash it out. Obviously it's gotta be a public meeting and people can attend uh, because we always have to be um, public in that sense. But I, I, I think it's something that we haven't done in a couple of years on this board, and I think we're overdue for, especially as um, it is a little easier to gather in public, or at least outside yes. of each other. 
Mm. So uh, I, I will take that on and, 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 and see how I uh, make that happen. Thank you. Good. Um, uh, so our next meeting date is t -t -t official meeting date is August 2nd. Monday, August, uh, sorry, Tuesday, August 3rd um, at 6.30. I assume it'll be virtual, though we probably should be talking at that point about going back. We can uh, discuss uh, that via email, too, just so everyone knows, because you're Yeah, we can talk about Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk about sort of the change in the status of that and how we feel about that. But um, I would say for now, it's safer to say it will be virtual. Um, and then we'll, we'll, if that changes, we can talk about that as it approaches. Good. And anything else? Uh, I, will uh, I want to give VSBA, I, I miss VSBA Code of Ethics. Uh, we were on the agenda tonight, so I want to bring that back up in August again. Okay, got you. Good. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Great. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank night, you all everyone. for your time. Much appreciated.